was a vendor that just had like tape cassettes and i know i was probably drunk but on a whim like wait this meeting is being live oh, okay yeah got it it should be that's good all right hold but, up the cassettes again let me see what you got no no no. i want i, I want to play a guessing game see if the, the randomness would very would very much impress you i think okay so we're on facebook we're on the rant we're recording so i think we're everywhere we need to be right now and o'shea is at 7 30 right yeah okay so there we go okay or o'shea o'shea okay okay o'shea, okay all right no way jose another guy we got to talk about tonight ah we don't have to we could talk about whatever we want to talk about. Matt's not here to steer the ship. That's right. It's rudderless. It's a rudderless ship. We are going off the fucking rails. Tonight, we are joined by O'Shea Edwards, newest member of Shane Taylor Promotions of Ring of Honor. Kev, that's not all. Oh, we no. We are joined by the one and only, making a name for himself everywhere like he predicted, the one and only Slice Boogie. You got to be excited about that. I'm pretty excited. Can't wait yeah. to talk to him about his tights, most of all. But we'll get uh, we'll get to that later on in the show. What else? We got two pay per views to cover. We got picks to cover. Kayla Sparks returned to the ring after 14 years. That's it. That's the headline, Tony. That's why I mentioned it last. But Kev, it's coming up all next right here on the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. Oh yeah. The following is a presentation of the Shining Wizards Network, broadcasting live on RantiumRadio.com and available on all podcast platforms and at ShiningWizards.com. Follow us on social media at Wizards Podcast. Check out our merchandise at Merch.ShiningWizards.com. Do your Amazon shopping at Amazon.ShiningWizards.com and become a Patreon supporter at Patreon.com slash Wizards Podcast. As always, we thank you for your continued support. And now, enjoy the show. This is Ian Riccoboni, the voice of Ring of Honor, and you're listening to the Shining Wizard Podcast. What's up, fuckers? <laughs> oh, shit. God, you motherfucker. Rolling in my tomb and army. Not adjust your radio dial. You're tuned in on the rant, rant entertainment media. You're tuned in on Facebook, facebook.com slash wizards podcast. And you're joining us live to tape wherever you download podcasts. It's the motherfucking shining wizards where it's wrestling talk and talk about that. Good, good, good wrestling. <laughs> Two man army back into fucking house Kevin, oh yeah what's going on tonight man oh bro you tell me man everything's going on everything is always going on moving and shaking doing the things making moves drinking some fine taps blue ribbon thought i'd change it up a little bit tonight a little uh pbr i uh i cat sat cat still sat. no no i did that cat sat is past tense tony oh okay i think so i cat to... sat for okay. my neighbors and they rewarded me with Nice little, you know, nice little and en- nice little padded, padded envelope, and uh, and uh, which I never, ever, ever want to take. But what? yo, these cats, shit, like, <laughs> yo, when I tell you, like, like my brother has cats, right? And they're like, they're like, they're usually like the poops are like pebbles, they're like like peanuts or something like that. These cats, my neighbor's cats, shit like soft pretzels, <laughs> like. It's like you're going like to a to a Jets game and you're in the parking lot and the the guy with the shopping cart hands you a cat poop like it it looks exactly like a soft pretzel I've never seen anything like it like it, twisted and everything it's all twisted I don't know how <laughs> it must be doing like circles like it must be doing concentric circles while pooping at the same time it's like most animals will do a little twirl before they sit down and go to sleep I guess those this guy this guy doesn't have time for that shit. He he twirls and poops at this. I'm, dude, I wish I t- I might have a picture of it because I was so impressed. Like it's li- like all right, I get it. The long the, the long the longness of it 
I can understand. But the fact that it's in like a shape of a pretzel every single time. I went over there for like five days and he's probably listening because um, he's, 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 a, he's a new supporter of the show. So, um, so I, I literally went there for five days and dude, every day, soft pretzel, soft pretzel, soft pretzel, soft pretzel. Put a little, put a little salt and mustard on that bad boy. Oh, they're probably already, it probably came with it. <laughs> alpha. No, was it alpha? Yeah. Alpha is the name of the cat. Of I course think that, it is. That, that what does other the cat poops? other than the alpha cat would shit in the shape of a pretzel? Uh, could have been Poe, named after Edgar Allan Poe. Oh. Quote the Raven nevermore. Oh, could have been Poe. Master Poe. Who's Master Poe? Uh, Kung Fu. Hmm. Not Wasn't familiar that with the guy the that hung himself in the closet when he's trying to get Oh, God, him? yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> See how I remember him? I can't remember his fucking name, but I remember what he died from. I, I, I think he died from a soft pretzel. Morbid Tony <laughs> bringing you the facts. I think he, oh, uh, who's Shining Wizards. <laughs> I think he uh, tied himself up with a really long cat poop. Okay, wait a minute. Wait. You're holding your phone up. Did you lose the rubber gasket around your around your otter box? N- this one never had an otter uh, rubber gasket. This is mad old school. Oh, no. Yes, it did. I did lose it. Yes. Yes. Wow. I was gonna say I got I got the same one, but mine has the the. the no, dude, this is an iPhone five, bro. Fuck, dude. Yeah, dude, it still works. It's never given me any trouble. I know, but wouldn't it be nice to just be able to update shit? Like, does it still update the software and everything? I don't. I don't do the updates. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Kevin living off the grid. Yeah, that's right. Come at me, bro. Apple's I'm probably not- listening right now, and like now I'm gonna get like <laughs> mad spam and shit. I I do. I have to apologize. I know mm. that your William Mercier gimmick is like kind of one of your more important. Dude, someone's calling me right now after I said that, after I mentioned Apple. Uh-oh. Put this up to the speaker. Let's see if it's- That's got to be a spam call. call. I'm not answering it. But how, no, dude, look at that, though. It. Look at that. Oh, oh, Jesus. That is some real shit. It's probably, it might be, who, who does Apple? Who's Steve Jobs? Is he Apple? Steve Jobs is dead, too. No, he gone? Oh yeah, he gone. Is that Tim, uh, Tim Cook? Now would be the guy calling you if anybody calls you. Tim Cook. Imagine that was Tim Cook. Yeah, Tim Cook, the asshole that takes more and more fucking ports off of every Apple pro of uh, a fucking project they work on. Is he the one going to space? No, that's Elon Musk. He's nah. the other guy. Oh no, He's... I thought it was um. Who? It's uh, not Elon Musk. It's the guy from Virgin. What the Bezos. fuck? Branson. Who? Bezos. Bezos. Steve. Oh, Be- uh, wait, Bezos is going to Mars? Where's he going? I think he's going to, I think he's going to Mars. Does he still have enough it. money? Because I, I know. You got it right. Expensive. Is that him? Maybe I could be wrong. Maybe it's Elon Musk. It, it's probably, flip a coin. Doesn't fucking matter. Guys with, guys with more money than we would ever fucking know what to do with. Yeah, man. This is, um, I'm excited about tonight's show. Two great guests. And Tony, I have, when I did uh, Boardwalk Buds down, the, down in Atlantic City, there was a vendor that had tape cassettes. Ooh, game time. I like this. And I bought four tape cassettes of the most random, random, uh, I guess, genres or supply or just okay. random artists. All very popular. Quick question. How much were the cassettes? Dollar a piece. Are they newer bands or these are like old school? Old. And two of them are sol- solo artists and two of them are bands. And one of them's a rapper. One, and they're from the 80s, all of them, or not necessarily? Uh, let's see. This one came out in we copyright should... 1989. And it's a rapper? No, that, that's, the, that's not a rapper. The rapper is 1988. And it's a uh, these, are just, these are just the copyrights, so I have no idea when they actually... Well, it, it's probably... 1974. Ooh, is that, is that a rock band? Yes. And... No, but I think you're, you're on the right track. Um, Leonard Skinner. Uh, no, but you're yeah, right I'm there. never gonna get them. This is okay. So all right, so here we go, Tony. One of them is unforgettable. You bought Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole, Christmas oh. in Bethlehem. Wait, that's not the rapper. No, it's not the rapper. <laughs> Nat King Cole, a cradle in Bethlehem, best loved Christmas carol sung by Nat that's- King Cole. Dude, that is a great fucking get for a dollar. I have no idea why I bought any of these. It's not King Cole, dude. How do you not? How do you no, but it, I have no idea what his Christmas songs are. I just know Unforgettable. So Kevin, which, which not- he sang with uh, his daughter, right? Well, I was like, originally, I think it was Alone, but later on, she did. All right. some- 
Double so this is the one that you were kind of on the right track with Alabama and Leonard Skinner. These are all people that were in other bands and formed like a super group in 19. 19- is it who Asia? No. Again, 1974. Oh shit. Yeah. Asia's the eighties, isn't it? So one of them was in a big, like oldies band and, uh, in like the 50s and 60s it's not the traveling wilburys is it no very close i i I, really, I these are like the traveling wilburys before the traveling wilburys so who so who is it who is it, it? is crosby stills nash oh, and young fuck why did that come to me god damn great get so far that's the name very of the nice. album. all right so here's the uh, here's the rapper wait wait well, what year is it this is not this is copyright 1988 and it's a st- i don't think it came out in 1988 but is it somebody i should know yeah you'll know dude Biggest LL Cool J. No, before I think MC Hammer. MC Hammer. Holy not, shit. Not the good album, not the one that had all his hits. I've never even heard of this album. Wait, wait, wait. It's uh it's please hammer don't hurt him. No, oh uh, I've had I had that album. No, it's not pumps and the bumps. It's no, no, uh, that, that's early hammer. That here come the hammers on there, no? Uh isn't it here come get, the hammer? Let's get it started. Yeah. I had that uh, album. Yeah, yeah. I had that CD from Columbia House. Twelve. Pump it up. <laughs> yeah, and so there's one more, and this one, this one is very popular duo. They split up, had very successful singles careers, one more than another. I don't think they've ever dabbled in wrestling. I don't think. I mean, that would that would have been a cool little segue if anything had what anything either? to do. I, this one I couldn't find. But it's an older group. It it's a duo. Good. And it very, was older, it's. God. Very, very popular, Tony. Very, very popular. I know. I can't think of their names now. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. Oh! Bridge over troubled water. Wow. You know what? That is a great $4 spent right there. That's oh, an amazing pickup. I wanted to go back the next day and you get sure? more. I should have. I don't know why. I have no. Tony, to this day, about three weeks later, I have no idea why I bought these. No I know, clue. Why? Because you knew how much I would appreciate you buying these. When we talk tonight, that was great material for the set, dude. Yeah, awesome. great material. Great, great. This is what we call the intro, where we don't really get into the nitty gritty just yet. We just kind of shoot the shit and just have, be, just be regular people, man. Like we said, Matt's not here to steer the ship tonight, so I will talk about anything you want to talk about. I don't need Ooh. to get upset. whatever. That is a dangerous precedent, Tony. Why is that? Because I could. What if I say I want to talk about pineapples or want to talk about talk about Thomas? About- Dude, pineapples, especially on pizza, I'll oh, talk about boy. that shit all no, day and no, all no, night. No, nope, 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 nope. We're not I going. know the constituents that are listening out there love their pineapple. We're not going down this. I didn't mean, I didn't want it to go to the pineapple pizza thing. That's not where I had in mind. Actually, I didn't have anything in mind, but. <laughs> Which is why I love the two-man army shows. Like we talked about at the top of the show, O'Shea Edwards from Ring of Honor will be joining us. Actually, shortly. I think he's a 730. Oh, yeah. And, uh, slice Boogie later on tonight around 9 o'clock. So, oh, oh Jesus. Shane you know Taylor what? Promotions, O'Shea Edwards, Slice Boogie, NWA Power. Dude, NWA, United Wrestling Network, Championship yep. Wrestling from, from Hollywood. Kev, I had to spoil a little bit about what's going to happen in MLW in order to get the goods because I wanted to make sure I was prepared for our guest tonight. Didn't we talk about this last week? We, Matt mentioned it. We kind of roundabout talked about possibly- Oh, that's right. whether or not we we're going to be able to ask him because it didn't happen yet. I mean, I'll throw it out there. We'll see. But from yeah, what I yeah. saw. See if the cat licks it up. It's out there. Yeah. It's out there. Or shits it in the shape of a pretzel either or. Oh, yeah. Whatever cat no shows its butthole on camera. Whatever cat metaphor you like on the Shining Wizards. Yeah, you know what? That's a great point that we're gonna have no cat buttholes this week. And I don't mind at all. No, 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 no. But let me get back to a few minutes ago. I need to apologize to you. Like I was saying, your your William Mercier Jr. is one of your star gimmicks on the show. Yeah, it's, it's pretty and, much uh, my thing. Uh, thanks to Ryan Arthur and the wonderful guys over at the Elementary Brewing Company for supplying us with the goods last week for our big return show. As you can see, it lasted all of one week because we're oh, back yeah. on Zoom. Uh, yeah. But I mean, Matt's not here tonight. My downstairs uh, studio is taken over because it became kitchen number two because kitchen number one is in shambles upstairs. Mm. But anyway, so Ryan gave us each our own can of seltzer. And I'm not a fan of seltzer. And I don't know why, but I'm drinking a White Claw tonight just because it was there and I was in <laughs> 
because I left like seven of them there last week. Yeah, they're they're there with a little bit of leftover beer. So I've I've got beverages to choose from. I just happened to grab a white claw tonight, but seltzer destroys me, destroys me so much that during your lives are gonna be, I kind of let one go. And if you do listen carefully, and I know you guys didn't believe me, you can hear me like really quietly say, "Oh shit, sorry." But by the time I got the sorry, I was laughing too hard, so I kind of like whispered it. Yeah, you had it in the open uh, in the show open. Can you play? Can you play that? Can you play it? I sure can. It's it's in the Varago. So here we go. <laughs> oh shit, God, you motherfucker! If you listen real close when you say God, you'll hear me say sorry, but it gets high pitched and really quiet. <laughs> oh shit, God, you motherfucker! You hear the sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna need that one more time, Tony. Oh, one more? You got it. <clears throat> oh shit, Scott, you <laughs> motherfucker! Dude, my kid and I were fucking around with it. I was just looping it like this. <clears throat> oh wait, I can press the loop button. <laughs> <clears throat> Is that better than Wolf Yet It? Uh, I don't know. We we can put it to a vote. Uh, whoever's listening live right now on the Facebook page, if they want <laughs> to. <play> this, but, uh, <laughs> Wolf, Wolf Yet It. Is just like his, he like, didn't even he didn't even sell the burp. He went right into the next thought out of his head. He was like, "Yeah." <laughs> so, like, who, like, what what word is that supposed to be? Like, we don't even know we, what word that is. Yeah, no, we were talking about we were talking about MLW, and he mentioned Airwolf, and then I started asking him about Airwolf, and I was like, Airwolf, and when I said Wolf, he just burped, and he was trying to answer it, but the burp came out, so he goes. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> so the, ver- the the reverberation from the burp led into his next word. And he, here you go. <laughs> yeah. <and> I- <laughs> yeah. And I- <laughs> yeah. And I- you can hear me say wolf really quietly as the burp comes out. <laughs> yeah. And I- <laughs> Wait, you're saying. I forgot that you're saying wolf. Yeah, because it, because I was asking about Airwolf, the wrestler who comes out to Airwolf, the theme song from the old 80s TV show, by the way, which is fucking irony on top of irony. Cody, is there any possible way we could get those back to back? Oh, sure. Here you go. Wolf. Yeah. And I th- <laughs> oh, shit. Scott, you <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, wait. Now Scott, I got you... a loop. I could, th- that could be the whole podcast. <laughs> I, might be able to, I might be able to loop Matt, too. Wait, hold on a second. Wolf, 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 wolf. <laughs> And then I can loop this one too. Oh, this is gonna be fucking hilarious now. <laughs> mine sounds mine sounds more like a fucking broken drum machine. You, and you and you bur- that wasn't the only time that you burped in the show. Like oh, you no, I'm, over I'm, like I'm, Matt, like I forget because I, I listened back to try to get the pick updates today. <laughs> and look, he was trying to like plug like a mark order or something like that. That went the Wednesday night vehicle, and you burped all over it. Like all over it, like right in like the meaty part of the of the shill too, like right dude, there. Seltzer does me dirty, dude. I can't even help it. Wolf, 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 wolf. <laughs> oh my god, Tony, I love you. I need to hear them both full full drops back to back. All right, I gotta, I just gotta, I gotta clean them up again because uh, let me see. All right, so here we go. That's one, and let me just clean up the other one. Make sure I don't put it on replay. And here we go. Wolf. Yeah, and I. Th- oh shit, Scott, you motherfucker! Wolf. Yeah, and I. Th- oh shit, Scott, you motherfucker! You motherfucker! Because Tony, both burps, like both major burps, like we all burp during the show because we're all drinking, we're all having fun, like we all do it. But you have like the two most massive burps at like the worst times. Well, like, that ever. first one's Matt's. That wasn't mine. That no, was... no, but you burped twice in the show, though. Oh, and oh, last week I'm yeah. sure it's more than that. Oh, yeah, but those were like huge, and one of them was like right in like my, like my gimmick. I don't listen. I might talk a lot, and I might be loud, and I might be stubborn, but <laughs> that's like my favorite thing that I do. And you just literally that <laughs> see how hot I got. I know, and and I think it also had to do with me explaining to Matt that we were good, that Kevin could do the gimmick, because there was some questioning about whether or not we could do another gimmick on the show. So I kind of got annoyed with Matt, and then I took a breath and relaxed, and then and that was it. <laughs> and then, and then history was made. Fucking history, baby. Because those are the two of my favorite drops, Kev, in the history. Of, speaking of favorites and making history. The one and only Kayla Sparks made his That's the lead on Sunday when she made her return 14 years in the making. Kev, 
I'll, I'll put this out there. Uh-oh. She's a lot more mature. She, I watched some of her training videos. She seems a lot more motivated. Fucking blew me out of the water, dude. Yeah. Amazing. Good stuff, she man. Led, she I'm led a fan of hers. And she led most of this match, and she wrestled a rookie, uh, Rebecca Scott. Her gimmick is like she's an airline pot. She's an she's an airline. I don't know stewardess, hostess. What do they call them now? No, um, they flight call them flight attendants. There you go. Sorry, I'm an old man. I I remember the old vernacular. It's yeah, not, the old sexist terms. Anymore. Well, I mean, you know, remember like half the pornos of the '80s were like stewardesses, like you know. Never mm. mind. No, no, you're my, you know you're on to something. That was my childhood. I don't know if it, was, if it was your childhood out there, folks, but uh, anyway, chambermaids. So anyway, so apparently this Rebecca Scott, she's training somewhere in Jersey. I think it's called the Adams School, not the David Adams School. Damien Adams. Oh, it is Damien Adams. Okay. I mean, that, that's, who I'm, that's who I'm thinking of because Damien okay. Adams has a school. I think it's out of New York, though. No, no, no. This is a school out of Wharton, I think. I, I did a little research. No, because, because that's where when – because both you know, the guys at Team Espana, right, and, and Korean, they live in New York. And it's it was easier for them to go to school there than it was for them to go to Rawway. So I think it's Damien Adams in New York. I think people, I could be wrong. People were mentioning it's Team Adams Pro Wrestling Academy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's in New York. Okay, because I found it in Jersey, and I think I remember somebody saying on commentary that uh, this girl Rebecca is uh, is from Jersey. Unless it's unless it's a, is Wharton easily accessible from like uh, I forgot I don't even know where Team Espana lives. Um, but is it easy, easily accessible for the five boroughs? I would think that I think there's a train station in Wharton. I think yeah, it's not too they, far from where I am right now, actually. I thought they tra- I thought they started going there because it was just too too far to go to to Rahway. I could be wrong. Anyway, it's none of my business either way. But well, anyway, this this was that uh, that women's wrestling revolution thing. I think it's uh it's part of Beyond. I guess uh it's one of Drew Cordero's like babies. It's still fairly new. Uh. Bunch of bunch of crazy talented women on this show, by the way. But this match blew me out of the water. Like Kayla controlled like three quarters of it. Everything was smooth. The comebacks were great. Even even when uh, Rebecca got the heat spots on her, like everything just looked amazing. Even the finish. Unfortunately, Kayla lost. Big win. Big first win. Gotta gotta put over gotta put over the the upstarts, baby. Gotta make gotta build new stars. But I tell you what, man, great match. Unbelievable match. It wasn't 45,000 kickouts. It was about a 10-minute match. Told a great story. Just unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. That's awesome. Good for her. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Kayla Sparks. We've become kind of friendly, so I'm really happy about that. She's, she's awesome. So good for her. Uh, ever since doing the podcast, I never knew anything about her before the podcast. Then you came on the podcast. And then she's just, she's just awesome. So good for her. See, I do, I do bring good things to the show once in a while. No, listen, I, I, I enjoyed that interview. So that was good. And then, like I said, I think we were, we're, we're kind of friends now. So I, I dig it. And her show should be coming out soon. They're still, uh, I, think, I think they're finished. Yeah, they wrapped on filming. So they're in post-production. So keep an eye out for that. Against the Ropes, it's on, it's going to be on Amazon. So yeah. you got Prime. No reason not to check it out. It's included. I got Prime. Me too. Prime, baby. So that was the lead, Kev. Now it's all downhill from here. Oh God, look at it. How do we start? How do we top that? Do we even oh. do we introduce ourselves, by the way? That we did, right? Uh, did we do the Tony and the KJG? Uh, no, we did the wrestling talk to talk about wrestling. I don't know. Mm. I'm Tony. K J G. You know what it is too? Like we introduce ourselves as the two man army on shows like this. So I think it's that's a good point. Because we are the two-man army. Thanks again to Kratzo for providing that music for us. Yes. Because we were the two-man group, and that morphed into the two-man army. Which I kind of liked at the time, because, like, blue-man group, two-man group. No, no, I get it. Of course. But then, like, two-man army is definitely better. Yeah. And uh, It's almost like one-man Mike Dell, the one-man army. The one-man Mike Dell, everyone's favorite shrink. What a great, dude, what a great spot he had. Um, is he still is he still working he's still working he still do wildcat i don't know about wildcat but i know he's definitely still working texas as far as i remember the I one I man know. mike dizel dizel oh man i gotta burp again jesus dude this is gonna be great this is gonna be a great show no it's not i hope i'm not burping when we're talking to oh no people. keep it going burp when we talk to all the guests too i can't i can't keep it going um the cavalcade 
We got about 10 minutes. I don't want to get into pay-per-views because I don't think that'll do it justice. But is I agree. Anything, is there anything that we can talk about in the next 10? Just so, uh, you know, we're not just sitting here staring at each other, what, wondering what we're going to ask our guest, O'Shea Edwards. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's what's really happening. Well, I, but I mean, uh, it's kind of a bummer because everybody knows Matt is the resident Ring of Honor guy. But, uh, you know, I think, I think, uh, I think we can handle ourselves. Oh, oh absolutely, absolutely, bro. Oh, how about we talk about this, bro? Freaking WWE back in front of live crowds. Fucking a, dude. Fucking a, dude. That made SmackDown so much more enjoyable. And listen, I haven't watched WWE in months and months and months, and I feel like that's pro- like I'm not expecting every show to be a home run, and this probably wasn't either. I was probably just like in awe of the difference in the return of, of the fans and everything like that. But I enjoyed the heck out of SmackDown watching it. Um, I watched it the next day. I didn't watch it live, but I watched it because uh, Peacock, Peacock puts up, no Comcast Xfinity puts them up pretty quick. So I, w- I was able to watch it literally the next day. And that was the go home to money in the bank, which we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about after, after our first guest, or we can start with slam anniversary, whichever, whichever you desire, sire. Um, well, because of things going on in my house, I didn't get a chance to watch much in terms of uh, I didn't watch any Slammiversary. I did watch a little bit of Money in the Bank. Um, I did because I could listen to it while I worked today. Did get to watch the finally released next episode of the Broken Skull Session. I can't I didn't watch it yet. So we can't talk about this. Oh, really? Dude, I didn't watch it. What do you, I, didn't, I didn't even know they released it. Well, Kev, I didn't watch Slammiversary, so we can't talk about that. I don't. No, you don't give a fuck about Slammiversary, though. Well, I care about watching this. I, I kind of do give a shit about Slammiversary. Are you Are you gonna watch it? Slammiversary. Yes. No, I'm gonna go back and watch the uh, the main event. I'm also very interested in the uh, fallout from Diana Perazzo. And you know what? To placate your ego and to throw your boys, the major boys, a bone, I want to see Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green teamed up. I don't think I spoiled that for anybody, did I? Probably not. I didn't see that coming, by the way. It was so obvious, and I didn't think it was going to happen. I really thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a swerve, bro. But then Viola, there it was. Yeah, Viola. <laughs> Viola La Greca. Yeah, I'm going to eat her hot pierogi. <laughs> Pierogies. Of course. How did we get here? We always get somewhere weird. That's what I love about doing the show. There's the two of us. The two-man army getting ready for, I guess, O'Shea Edward, Drink of Honor, Shane Taylor promotions, right? Yeah, promotions. Yeah. yeah. Dude, every time, I wasn't sure if it was promotion or production for a second. I'll tell you this much. Every time I see Shane Taylor promotions on the pay-per-view, got to go Shane Taylor. Got to go. Dude, I, I dig him, man. Like, I dig oh. We talked about it last week. Like, every single, like, I, I, every single one of them is like a freaking beast. It's like, it's like not even fair. Like, how are they not like dominating everything? I mean, they kind of are, but. Well, I think, I think they're in the middle of uh, some nonsense right now with the foundation. Then you also have violence unlimited, you know, hanging around. So, you know, a lot of spoons in the porridge right now. Oh, uh, listen, Matt, even when he's not here, Matt's here. Always spoons in the porridge. All right. So let me get back to the, to the, to the fans back in the seats. Sure. That'll put. That'll put butts in the seats. <laughs> um, it uh, again. I don't know if the show, if SmackDown itself, was hundred percent like the best wrestling show I've ever seen. But goddamn, it sure felt like it. That Finn Balor came back. Um, the eggplant is back on on SmackDown. Yep, yeah, the eggplant is down with the SmackDown. Fucking a, dude. Uh, what else happened? Uh, there was a lot of good stuff on it actually. Uh. Dude, Shotzi, Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox are on SmackDown now. Which is really? kind of wild. Both of them. Yeah, they're a tag team called Shots and Knox. Or Shotzi and Knox. Shots and Knox would have been better, but even that's kind of... I didn't mean, yeah, that was an accident. I didn't even mean to say that. But that, yeah, I think you're right. I think that would be better. But I just kind of... I wish that they brought up Ember Moon with Shotzi because I really like that team. But I guess Ember Moon might be better. She's a veteran, so she might be better served on... In NXT, as opposed to being back on SmackDown with 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 Shotzi, but uh, they showed up. Um, God, something else big happened too. What the heck else happened? 
www.com smackdown we're smacking it down dude it was just it was just so cool to have like a leg- and it i mean aew did it first but um but to see w- it on w- wwe like really kind of WWE did it right they did it right you can say it no 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 i'm not saying that they did, they did it any better or any worse than aew I, i'm just saying that Kevin like it made me it made me happy to watch wwe again but it's not the Wednesday night show. You don't have to blow AEW. It's okay. No, AEW was great. <laughs> AEW on like, Wednesday was fantastic. I heard a lot of people actually went fucking bananas for it. Banana. Banana. No, I, I, I watched actually both. I, like I said, I watched SmackDown yeah, uh, Saturday. Did I watch it on Saturday? Yeah, I watched it on Saturday. And, uh, and Wednesday I watched AEW actually pretty much as live as live can be yeah pretty sure i had it on the entire time and uh and the crowd was electric there listen i'm excited to go to aw in september i haven't bought tickets for the queen show or the new york show yet i don't know if i'm going to um i'll see you probably won't go to new york to watch aw right probably not no archer archer ass archer arthur (laughs) wash your ass stadium that's where it's gonna be wash your ass Guys, come here. Watch fifteen thousand people wash their ass. Stadium. Wash. Uh, yeah, All the nah, years I thought it was Arthur Ashe. I never, I never thought to confuse it to wash your ass. That's well, no, I said of- Archer ass when I meant Arthur Ashe. Oh, but it led into wash your ass. Which oh is- yeah, you gotta wash your ass. If you're not washing your ass, <laughs> if you ain't, if you ain't washing your arse, you're- wow. If you, <laughs> all right. If you ain't wash, if you ain't, this is a great time for the guest to be in the queue. I love it. I love how O'Shea just pops in and you're talking about people washing their asses. O'Shea, how's it going, man? Can you hear us? You got us yet? Hey, hey, there we go. There we go. What's going on, man? There's that handsome fella. How are you tonight? I'm doing pretty good, man. How about yourself? And actually, I just got home and I'm opening up mail and get some money for me. Oh, this oh is no awesome. way. Yeah, dude, this is perfect time, bro. What? That would be. That is what you call fate. T-shirt, yes, merch, fate. If it's what I think it is. Watch it not even be it. Watch it be like something else. No. It better be. It has your name on it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it looks like something Matt might have wrapped up. Yeah, like Matt. That Matt, like, who is not with us tonight. Looks he's, like a- still, he's still alive, but he's just not here. Um, right, right, right. No, baby, he, uh, that's what you mean, buddy. He sent hey. us all. Yeah, oh, buddy. Now, now you got to take... Yeah, let me ask you this. Are the sleeves and the collar coming off of that bad boy or no? Yeah, they're coming off. They're coming dude, dude yeah. you're Jack, so you got to make sure as soon as you put that on later or tomorrow, whenever, take a picture, send it to the Twitter, send it to the IG, and uh, or actually probably just the Twitter. And uh, I got we'll, post that, we'll post that all over the place because uh, that's awesome, man. What are the odds of that happening? The day of the show, you get it? Hey, man, it's fate, maybe. That's it. And for those listening and not watching on Facebook, I... Uh, the Shining Wizards, pink and black, arrived just in time for all. Just in the- time, baby. Just in time. <laughs> time for- Actually, oh, mother as I got the uh, I got our way showing right now. So. Oh, no <laughs> worries. You got to watch. I was watching the way, watching way home. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So, how are you tonight, man? man? I'm good, man. I'm doing. I'm doing real good. Um, you know, I'm still riding high off of uh, you know, best in the world. Um, it, it, it's it's un, it's unreal, man. Like we finally have like people back and fans and all that stuff. So it's just one of those things, man. Where it's like, yo, man, this was worth the sixteen months. Like to get that, like yo, man, I'll do that again. Hands down, like, not a problem. I'll do that again. <laughs> What's it like working with a guy like Shane Taylor, who um, who literally has kind of blown up due to all of his his hard work and his perseverance and his stick to itness. And he's just a he's just a great guy, and he, he proves all the doubters, all the haters wrong. And now he's in a spot with you guys that is top of the card, six man world t- world champs, earned every second of it. Does any of that kind of rub off on on the rest of the crew or anyone that that hangs around him in Ring of Honor? Oh yeah, perfect. It's, it, it's easy just because of the fact that like um, you know everybody has the same like mindset. Everyone kind of goes about it a little differently, but everyone has the same mindset. So it's not like much of like a like a hive mind type deal. Um, but everybody, everyone has their strong suits, and everyone has you know where they excel. And you know where one guy excels, 
you know, the other guy may not. So everybody just kind of slides in. So it's one of those things of just like, you know, no matter what, we got you covered, you know? And so every, everybody does, everybody in our group does everything well. There's some, some aspects that people excel other than others, but it doesn't take away from anything. So for us to come in and, you know, our biggest thing is like, we don't want you to give it to us. Like that's too easy. The way we've been living our lives, nothing's easy. So why would this be easy? You know, like we were, we're built different. We're ready for the grind. We're ready for the, the, you know, for you to tell us no and give us the excuses and give us the reasons why you can't. And then what we will, we end up doing is give you the reasons why we can, and then we go do it. Um, talk is cheap. Everyone does it. You know what I'm saying? But it's, you know, it's, the action is what really separates you from everybody else. So like when we're all together, man, it's like we are we are a force like when by ourselves. But man, when you put us together, man, we are we are stop, like 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 no, no one can stop us. And that scares a lot of people because we're we're solidified. We're solidified in the ring. We're solidified out of the ring. Like we talk to each other every day and it's like a giant business meeting. You know, of course, we know we shoot the shit and we goof off and everything. But for the most part, like it's a business meeting. We're always talking about, okay, how do we further the brand? How do we further each other's career? How do we further this? How do we do this? How do we do this? We're always looking for the new way to get better, to get better, to get better, to get better. Because for us, it's just, this is what we do. We, we continue to get better. We continue to strive for, for it because, man, we're trying to get paid. And um, we don't care whose name's on that check as long as it clears. <laughs> And clearly you guys are, are mainly, mainly business, but do you guys get to have fun? Is there anything fun about being in this, in this group? Is it, do you guys have good times? Do you, do you uh, oh, like. It's, it's like hanging out with your brother. You know what I'm saying? It's like hanging out with, you know, like how you, everyone has those cousins that you haven't seen in a while. And then when you get around with your cousins, everybody just goofs off. Um, that's what it is. <laughs> like, that's all we do. We goof off where we're cutting jokes. We're doing whatever, you know, because it's, you know, as, as much as we play hard, you know, is only because we work even harder. You know, we 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 play that hard. So, I mean, we, we work that hard so we can play that hard. You know, and and it just it just brings us together. Like we're a co cohesive unit. Like we all do our own things. You know, Shane and 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 um and Con, they're out in Texas. You know, what I'm saying me and Moses. You know, like I'm out in uh, Pennsylvania. He's out in Maryland. And you know, we just kill it. You know, we can do our own separate thing. But when we come together, it's just like ah, oh, so that man. You got nothing for us. Like no matter, like the combination alone, it's almost like pick your poison. Because no matter what, you're going down. Yeah, and we, I, Tony, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, let me plug real quick. We're on the line with Show O'Shea Edwards. Easy for me to say. At <laughs> Big Bad Kaiju on the Twitter. Part of Shane Taylor Promotions all day. Damn O'Shea on the Facebook and on Instagram. Um, you said talk was cheap, but I was following closely your feud uh, with Sledge. I never heard so much trash talking from anybody, man. <laughs> now you see, we, we were just talking before we got on the line with you about how the crowds are starting to come back. And I know you guys ran the pay-per-view last week and you guys started having crowds again, you know, AEW is bringing them back. WWE is bringing them back. But I think that maybe with the crowds being there, we might get to miss out on all that juicy stuff that you were saying to sledge. So what's it been like for you and have you been enjoying it? You know, being able to be on the microphone, letting people like actually hear what's going through your mind as you're as you're wrestling somebody. Man, the biggest I I, I said it before, like one of the worst things that ever could have happened to me was the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, before the pandemic, like for WrestleMania 2020, like I had like eight bookings, and you know they were big. Like I had Chris Bay and a handful of others, like they were big. And then I just watched within like 24 hours, me just poof gone. It was whatever, and so. It was either I can sit here and pout and try to figure out like, you know, oh man, I can't, you know, what was me? Or I could find a new way for me to be heard. And if I couldn't be heard in a wrestling ring, it's like, well, you're going to hear me in front of a camera. Um, and that's where like the, um, the, you know, the, the, you know, have a seat at my table spawns from uh, a lot of some of the other promos spawn from, but like for when it comes to like sledge and everything, I was going to take full advantage of the fact that nobody was there because it was, like I said, you were going to hear what I had to say you're going to hear every single syllable I had to say, and then you were going to feel exactly what I had to say. It's one thing for, you know, I tell people, Thomas, like hearing me and listening to me are two separate things. Um, 
And when I talk, I'm going to make sure that you, that you listen to me. And I'm, and a lot of times I tell people too, like, it's not trash talk if you can back it up, you know, <laughs> Yeah. If, you, if you're the best corner, best cornerback in the NFL, you take, you know, you taking Tom Brady, you know, pick six. Yeah, maybe you're the best corner in the league because look what you just did. So for me, I, 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 I talk a lot because my biggest thing is um, if you don't like what I'm saying, y'all come shut me up. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why Darrell Revis shut down half the field and no one, no qu- quarterback ratings go down when you get Darrell, Darrell Revis, you know, it, covering the he, best receiver. He talks what? a lot because he can back it up. Exactly. Exactly. What do you enjoy more? But I've never actually asked this question before. Do you enjoy the actual in ring stuff or do you enjoy the entertainment stuff more? Like what, like what is your preference? Would you rather go out there and be like a, a talker, a, like a trash talker or this and that, or do you actually enjoy the, the, the in ring more? Which, which one is it? I, I enjoy the entertainment more. Um, I'm a showman, you know, like it's just, it's fun. You know, um, I tell people Tom, like at his core, man, wrestling is just theater. You know, this is this is theater. It's just we hit each other really hard. <laughs> just <a little> bit, <laughs> you know, like, you know, Othello, Othello, and then pop, and it's right in the mouth. Um, but for me, I enjoy the entertainment of it um, because I tell people, Tom, I was like, you look at guys like Tracy Williams, you look at guys like Rhett Titus and Gresham and Lethal, and a lot of those guys, man, they're they're great wrestlers. They are like purebred, like pedigree wrestlers. I am not a wrestler. I, I, I you know, I fight. Um, my fighting style is very ugly, um, but I always say, you know, it's like, oh, you know, my offense is pretty. I'm like, yo, when was the last time you got into a street fight with somebody and it was pretty? Yeah. Like, no, nah, man, I'm not here for a beauty contest. I'm here to win. And if it's ugly but effective, I'll take ugly and effective every day of the week. Um, but for me, though, I enjoy, like, talking people in the building. Like, I got to, you know, I got to, my whole thing is, um, I got to make you give a crap about me. Even if you don't like me, I still have to make you give a crap about me. Um, the worst thing that could ever happen is if I got no emotion. If you boo me, cool. I can invoke a re- reaction. If you cheer for me, cool. I can revoke it. I can invoke a reaction. But the minute you, I get no reaction, something's not right. Something bad has happened. Yeah. Um, and being with the pandemic and a lot of these shows were just real, just like empty. That was the one thing that I was saying that were, that was the gap where guys would wrestle and they were like, oh, yeah, this would be cool if we did this, da 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 And I'm like, cool for who? There's nobody in the crowd, dumbass. Like, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> um, but for me, it was just like, the, the, when I, the way I wrestle, it's just like, if you buy a ticket to come watch me wrestle, honestly, like, I'm not wrestling for you. I'm wrestling because I got to beat this guy up. You just paid your 20 bucks, and I'm allowing you to come along this ride with me. Now shut up and buckle up because it's about to get bumpy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And then from there, like, if you like, you like, if you don't, you don't. But I'm like, eh, it's whatever. <laughs> and, I, and I'm with you. And I bring this up a lot, too, because I'm a, I'm a stand-up comedian. And, like, if I'd rather have someone heckle me and completely rip me apart than the sit on their hands the and right. just no reaction. That's a, brother, that's a lonely that's a lonely place in the world, man. That's the loneliest place in the world, man. Yeah, there's and there's so many similarities, I feel like, between wrestling and comedy in that way. And I bring this up probably ad nauseum to a lot of people's disgust. But I feel like you just hit it like literally right on the head. Like, boo me. I don't care. Hey, like, do you prefer like being like like a, a bad guy? Um, do you, is there any preference for you? No, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to continue doing what I got to do. Um, if we're going to pull the curtain back a little bit, I say the only major difference between a, a baby face and a heel is the motivation and, and how he goes about doing it. And that's pretty much about it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because every bad guy thinks they're doing the right thing. In, in every movie, the bad guy thinks he's just. Like, I, take, I use the phrase all the time. Like, you, it's like everybody's watched, the, uh, you know, watched the Infinity War saga. Like, yo, in his mind, yo, Thanos was right. Like, he was the good guy. He was just doing what, like you said, no one else had the balls to do. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, but for me, though, I'm like, no, nah, man, I got to do what I got to do. You may not like how I go about doing it, but that's that's whatever. If he was in my shoes maybe things will be a little different if you boo me you boo me if you cheer me you cheer me but nothing's going to stop me from getting where i gotta go okay so you brought up thanos are you a fan of the marvel cinematic universe love it i've watched all right. them all chronological order absolutely love them yeah when uh when my kids started getting a little older we actually went back and we started watching everything from the beginning uh man it's great you pick up the small stuff when you start doing that Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, have you been following any of the shows on Disney Plus, like Wandavision? So I watched Wandavision. I watched um, uh, 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 the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I gotta get caught up on Loki. 
um, just time gets ahead of me sometimes and I just, and I got other stuff to do, but I don't mind binging it just because I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? I'll binge something for a little bit, kill a day. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it, the way, the way they've done these shows has just been nothing short of amazing. Like the storytelling, they bring back all the actors that are part of it. Like even WandaVision, when they brought back his brother and they were like, but that's not the same guy. It was, a, right. it was you know, it's like, I was, I was wondering how they're going to pull out. I'm like, how are you guys going to pull this off? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and, and it's wild too because I, I don't want to spoil anything with Loki, but it's really definitely worth it. Like I think yeah. it might be my favorite, and uh, yeah, the storytelling is just so out there. The first episode, the first episode got me. It, like Tom got away from me. I was like, I gotta watch it. I just, I gotta watch. Like crap, it's over. Yeah, I gotta watch it. So I, like I'm just gonna binge it one day. Like when I gotta travel and I'm sitting in the airport, I'm gonna watch them all call it a day. <laughs> just love all the stories. I can't wait. We actually went to see Black Widow last week too. And a lot of people were a lot of people shat, were shitting on it, and I was like, I thought it was great. Like you get her backstory, you get to meet yeah. her. Sister, like you get you get more depth in the character. I love that type of stuff, man. Right? Yeah, like Give it to me. It's got to be really bad for me not to like it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's just got to be right. completely off the rails in order for me to be like, ah. Eh, but it was re- I I enjoyed it, man. I'm all. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a watch. Like, but like I said, it's just like I, I have a list of things I got to get through. I'm like, gotta watch this. Oh, gotta watch this. Oh crap, another one. I gotta watch this. So I have like all these shows I gotta watch. I just gotta find the time to do it. Well, whenever whenever you get caught up, if you want to come back on to talk about it, you know. Yo, I'm down. I'm down. I'm, I'm a giant nerd for this stuff, dude. I'm so down. <laughs> So Kevin and I were talking about you. Before. Yeah, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> it's all the Marvel movies, dude. Come on, the Hulk, Captain America, on, I never, seen, never seen a single one. I'm watching Royal Rumble '92 on loop. Oh. This is this is this is me judging you right now. Oh, listen, I <laughs> I probably deserve it, but like I don't, I just don't, I don't have the patience to sit down and watch movies. Like, it's just, like, I don't watch any movies. It's not just that. Like, hardly any movies no, I just don't watch. You can watch a seven-hour WrestleMania from, like, the mid-2000s, but you can't watch a two-hour superhero movie? Come on. That's right. Really? That's right. I like what I like. <laughs> yeah. Don't judge like me, it. Tony. Uh, yeah, I like what I, I like. What I like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Kevin and I were talking before, before you joined us, uh, actually about you joining uh, Shane Taylor Promotions, and you know, you're a big guy, obviously, you know, muscles, tall, <laughs> but you're in a group with guys that are like as big as you. And like, you know, when we picture you, we'd be like, okay, three smaller guys, but you're the muscle. Like you're the guy that nobody messes with, but you're in a group where nobody messes with anybody. So like, what's the psychology there? It's like, you guys just form like a, like a defensive line that you could just take everybody out. Yeah. Who's the yeah. actual muscle? <laughs> that's, the, that's the best part, man. It's just like, you know, um, when, like I said, you know, in football, it's kind of hard to have like a super team, you know, but at yeah. the same time, like when you have one guy who just can just terrorize somebody, it's like, okay, do we stop him? Because if we stop him, then we got to worry about the, him. But of course, if we stop this one, then we're worry about the other one. So like I said, it, like I said, it's one of the things where we're that perfect storm where there is no real major, you can't key on anybody because yeah. as soon as you key on somebody else, you're going to get crushed by the other guy. And and that's what we and that's what we do, man. Where it's just like this constant, like changing. Where it's just like no matter what happens, man, we got you covered. You know, we like people all say it's like you know don't, don't let the size fool you. Like yo, the the boys can move. You know, like watching watching Moses, you know, Bandera over the top rope with a running cannonball off the apron. So like, oh, dude's three hundred pounds. Like who's seeing that coming? Yeah, so you true. know, and then, and then here comes Jasper with a top rope jackhammer. Like come on, and 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 it's one of the things I'm like, okay, what can these guys? What can't they do? And then the answer really becomes nothing. <laughs> There's nothing that we 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 can't do, and that's what that's why people are like, people take notice. It's why people are afraid, you know? It's why people want to kind of like, ooh, I don't know if I want to really like, you know, let these guys get get on a roll because, I mean, once we get on a roll, like who stops us except for so except for ourselves? No, nah, and you're right. And I guess like you mentioned like the the super team in the NFL, I guess like, I mean, Tampa Bay might be like the the one that the closest, might be yeah, the, the closest thing you can get, right? Might be the closest because the receiving core was just absolutely insane. Like both sides of the field, like Mike Evans and uh, God, Godwin, right? Godwin, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. And then, then even like a receiver out of the woodwork, I can't even remember his name. He just like he comes out, and you have Gronk, and you have the running backs that they brought in. So you kind of, you kind of hit the nail on the head with with that. That's like the probably the closest thing to a super team in the NFL that I could think of, and they're not even 
and they're not all young players either. No, so. no. I mean, but there's like I said, it's one of the things that they're we're a well balanced team. We yeah. do everything. You know, we may not do it as well as everyone else, but we do it to a point that man, it's effective. Like yo, like these guys can mm-hmm. these guys can do you know what they got to do, and it's 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 scary, and we kind of like it like that. We want to keep you guessing. God, yeah. Look at this: Antonio Brown, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, uh, Leonard wow. Fournette. Yeah, Leonard Fournette. Yeah, and I. So who do you key on? Uh-huh. And, yeah, and, and, and and this is the guy I was thinking of, Scott Miller. Yeah, who do you <laughs> you key on? You key Antonio Brown, Gronk's wide open. Yeah, you key on Gronk, Fournette kills you up the middle. Yep. Like so what? It's a damn if you do, damn if you don't. So you guys are you guys are like the Tampa Bay Bucks of Ring of Honor, huh? Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> you got the yeah, you got the championships. Right. I mean, I'll take it. Yeah, that's a, that's a great comparison. You know what I'm saying? I'm not mad at it at all. I know. So, I know you guys have been uh, more opening up uh, in Ring of Honor in terms of the pandemic. Like, uh, you know, we talked to a bunch of the guys over the past several months. You know, about living in the bubble and what they've done. Um, what What was it like for you? Like, how? What did you spend your time doing? What you know? Like, what was it like when it came down to lockdown? You know, man. Um, honestly, man, it was me evolving. It was okay. Um, wrestling for the most part is done. Like I kind of got my mind right. Um, so in a span of, so in my mind, it was, okay, guys, the race literally got called and everyone's got to go back to the starting line. And now we're all at the starting line and we're all just waiting for like the gun to go off. So I was like, okay, cool. And the time that it's going to take for this gun to go off, I have all this time to prepare myself to like get one hell of a you know jump out the gate so how do i want to do this do i want to do i want to be in a do i want to walk run drive or don't want to be on a on a fucking rocket ship <laughs> and i made sure that in that span of time like i built a rocket ship so when that gun goes off man i am just i'm 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 out the gate um one of the things i've been telling people before was like yo name another cat in 16 months who went from a relative dude in the DMV to now all of a sudden like standing across the standing across the ring from guys like Jay Lethal, Chris Dickinson, you know, Rat Titus, Tracy, you know what I'm saying? Like name it, like name another one. And here's the thing, the names that you come up, that you can come up with, because there's quite there's a good little chunk of guys, like those names are perennial. Like indie superstars. And then all of a sudden here comes O'Shea, like people are like, who? And I'm like, yo, just don't just chill. Watch what I do. Like there's a reason. And I tell people all the time, I was like, people say, oh man, you made it. And I'm like, man, I talked too much shit for me not to make it. Like I, I took away every reason for me to fail. I took away every excuse. I was like, no, nah, man, when it's all said and done, like you're going to see when you bring them on a ring. I, I guarantee it. And I had no promises. I still don't have any promises. I still don't have any guarantees, but I'm like, nah, I'm a lot of things, man. A liar ain't one of them. Let's flip the switch a little bit real quick. Uh, get, get a little more serious for a second because, you know, not everyone necessarily knows everything about every wrestler. Mm-hmm. Uh, our audience is certainly, uh, it, it, might be, it might be large, but it might not 100% know everything about O'Shea Edwards. Uh, recently, um, you came out as, as a bisexual, which, uh, which got a lot of, lot of uh, press over, uh, over time. Um, mm-hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit because wrestling now more than ever, and it never used to be this way, Mm-mm. it's starting to be... In- inclusive like everyone's like everyone seems to be welcome now and everyone just welcomes everyone with open arms was that something that you experienced uh when when you came out as bisexual were you welcomed um into into the into wrestling business which you know is kind of you know chauvinistic kind of this and that was Mm -hmm. uh was was that something that you experienced did you have good good responses bad responses what was it like If if it wasn't for wrestling i wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for wrestling i wouldn't have done it um before i became a wrestler i was a fireman so I for like 15 years. Um, before that, I played college football. You know, I played pretty much every single level. You know, they, I knew this when I was like 18, 19 years old. But like, dang, no way. It's like 2003, 2004. I'm dating myself here. You know, that all of a sudden, they're like, I'm going to come out in a, in a football locker room. I'm like, you kidding me? Yeah. Like, my career is done. Like, over. The times were different. You know, I joined the fire department. Same thing, man. Fire department's full of type A personalities. And there was a few firemen at the time who were out and I saw like the crap they were getting and everyone kind of thought it was a joke. And I was like, man, ain't no way 
for that, I'm like, no, because I'm going to have to fight somebody. Somebody's going to tell a wrong joke and I got to fight somebody. Yeah. And I'm not going to have all that. So, like, I kept my, because I, I mean, it's not so much I was ashamed. I just, I'm like, man, this isn't it. Like, I'm living in the South. I understand where I live. I read the room rather well. I'm like, mm -mm, this ain't the time. But it wasn't until I got into wrestling and it wasn't until, like, I started meeting everybody and, and just really being accepted for who I am when I realized, like, yo, this is, like, if I'm going to do this, this, this is the time that this is it. And, like, it was great. I, I, was, I was met with an outpouring. Um, and if anybody said anything negative, they sure as hell didn't say it to my face, um, <laughs> you know, and everybody's been real cool. I, you know, I, I'm a, you know, bisexual black man living in America. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. It's, it's who I am. You know, I don't, I don't define myself by it, but it's like, no, it's who I am. It's a part of me. It's, it is what it is. I'm not asking anybody to really accept it. Like, it's not for you to accept it. This is me. It's whatever. As long as my bills get paid on time, it's really all I care about at the end of the day. Um, but it's, it's been great. Like everybody's been real cool. Everybody, like I said, it's just like, yo, O'Shea came out. Cool. Yeah. All like, right. Like, what's the what's the big deal? I'm like, yeah. I, I'll, cool, that's gonna be my follow up. Are you are you surprised that stuff like this is still even a even a story? Like, is it? Yeah, yeah. I, I am. Um. Now, let's see, maybe I'm ahead of the curve. Maybe I'm just like, okay, what's what's the big deal? Like, I to me, I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, I, I understand like me coming out like to a fat. I've had a few people reach out like, yo, thank you so much for that. They gave me a lot of confidence. Do what I had yeah. to do. Like, my sister came out to me when I was. It was awesome. Like, I I was, I was absolutely floored that she was like, like, no, I, I was like, that she would tell me first. It was, I was like, what? She's like, yeah. He's like, I, I heard you do it. And that, that was it. So I, I mean, I'm like, cool. Honestly, if me coming out, like help somebody more importantly, help my family for them to gain the confidence and the curse come out. Like, that's all I really care about, yeah. you know? It, but um, it's, I get why it's a thing. Yeah. I get why it's a thing, but I'm, I'm ready for the day where it's not a thing anymore. Yeah, and I think I, I and I I didn't want to speak so out of turn. I don't think it should never not be a thing because I feel no, like no, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the more positive like reaction you get, like the more people you can help in the position right. that you're in, then yeah. I think that's incredible. And we're seeing inclusivity in every every single brand, every single wrestling company in the world mm -hmm. is 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 now you know in, engaging and embracing. Um, the 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 the, the, the se sexuality of all, of everybody gender everything it's just so it's incredible and this is something that would have never happened in 1980 1990 i mean um, not, honestly not even 10 years ago yeah, yeah. Not even, and that, and that, i mean not even 10 years ago without it being like a just a thing so, so what would you like to see in wrestling specifically like where would you like to see like is there anything more that wrestling can do to oh, man. Pr yeah. promote inclusion communication like that's the big and that's all the way around like just better communication so many people assume so much stuff so many people just have preconceived notions about so much stuff um some so many people ready to take one side of things and that's it and they don't want to talk to one another oh well, i just heard it from someone else i'm like yeah. yeah man but you have you know side a side b and somewhere in the middle is the truth regardless of what's going on and you know to me, like I'm a professional in all things I do. You know, I always say like, you can't spell professional without professional, you know, <laughs> you, just, you just can't. And to be a professional means, you know, proper communication, you know, even if it's some, something simple like a booking, you know what I'm saying? Like, or just, hey, what do you want, you know, out of the match or what are you looking for me to do to come in and do the show? Like communication means the key, is the key. Um, because if you communicate with me what you want, then there's no there's no miscommunication, there's no misunderstandings. Like, no, man, we talked. You told me exactly what you wanted, and how you wanted it done, and this is what we did for you, and, and blah, 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 blah. Um, but, you know, sometimes that's easier said than done. You know, some people get it, some people don't. You know, but communication, like, to me, is is the key with, with everything. If you can't communicate me, with me, then I don't do business with you. Yeah, and I think that's, that goes, I know I, I mentioned wrestling specific, but that goes for like everything and like everything, every, everything. every walk of but life. In terms of, but in terms of wrestling, like communication is the one thing to, in my mind that's always like lacking. Yeah. You know, how, how many times have guys been left on red? You know, um, <laughs> you know, I get left on red all the time. My thing is like, yo, just tell me no. It's cool. It's business. And I keep it moving. So many people are always like a little like in their feelings about it. Yeah. But I think the sooner that people can communicate, in wrestling, the sooner people understand wrestling that above all else, this is a business. 
Like that's the one thing like, yo guys, this is a business. Um, not everyone's gonna like you and that's okay. Not everyone's gonna say yes to you and that's okay. You just move on to the next one, you keep it going. And we find ways to turn those no's into yeses. That's it. Um, but sometimes, you know, people can get little in their feelings when it comes to wrestling. And I get it because yeah. when I first started, same way. I was in my feelings all the time. I was like, why can't the devil tell me no? How dare you tell me no? But then I was like, you know what? Nah, they told me no for a reason. So now I'm going to sit there and bust my ass to make sure I take away every single reason for anybody to ever tell me no ever again. And I'm to a point now where people don't tell me no no more. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Uh, a couple more before we let you go. O'Shea Edwards here with us on the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. First of all, where did you play college ball and what position did you play? Uh, I Small Division II school, University of West Georgia out in Carrollton. I guess like the last biggest town here if we hit the Alabama line. Um, <laughs> so I was out in the sticks, man. Whew, out in the sticks. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, like I was too small. I was too small to for the for a power five football, like division one. Um, but I played offensive line. I was offensive guard um in high school. And then when I got to college, I kind of I was almost like a utility man. I played everything. Like I I, I can start, I mean I can snap, I could, you know, pull as a guard, I can anchor down the end as a tackle it was just whatever you kind of needed so I was never really like I told you it's almost like guys I wasn't that great at college football like I wasn't like a starter or anything but but I was one of those guys like when you needed me you could plug me in and you didn't have to worry about it yeah that that I mean every every single team needs a guy like that to, yeah to be honest, that was, that was it. like everybody can't be everybody can't be Tom Brady and I was quite all right with that like that's fine <laughs> <laughs> all right Tony I'm gonna ask one more before we wrap it up Tony you got anything else before I do uh yeah i mean you're a big guy i'm sure you eat healthy what's your cheat day oh brother you want the whole day yeah sure sure so, I got a so in, a, in a perfect world in a perfect world uh like i'll hit up like perfect world i'm going to Krispy Kreme. Nice. And give me a dozen, give me a dozen original glazed donuts hot off and i'm just like dumb things will never leave the box like i'll just <laughs> bar, bar, bar. The, that dumb things i like crack man i love them um so I'll get make some Krispy Kreme donuts for, for breakfast. Um, for lunch, they'll yeah, probably go to Five Guys. Nice. I'll get a burger, lettuce, tomato, lettuce, tomato, pickle, A1 sauce, A1 right. sauce. Okay. And then I, and here's the thing, though, I get another burger built the exact same way. Um, so I mean, I'm crushing two of them things. Um, for for second lunch, it's going to be sushi. You know, shrimp second lunch, you said. <laughs> second lunch. <laughs> Second lunch, baby. Y'all have second lunch? Second lunch is awesome. Um, but like sushi, <laughs> look at me, dude. Do I look like I have second lunches? I love second lunch, man. <laughs> second lunch is great. But like, you know, shrimp tempura, eel, you know, crab, eel, salmon, tuna, like whatever. And then um, usually for dinner, it's going to be a extra large New York pizza, double pepperoni, give me a Pepsi on the side, and I, or beer or whatever. Man, look, I'm done for the day, man. I'll get at a boy and I'm, I'll, I'm done, man. I'll sit in front of the TV, watch a bunch of cartoons. I'm good to go. <laughs> I had, the only, the only, I had t- Tony. Sorry, I, I had Taco Bell three times this week. My man, live, live, you treat yourself, live your best life. Wait, three times? It's only Monday. <laughs> oh, okay. Last week, last week into this week. I, I have no idea what day it is, bro. Like, bro, let's wake up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. Like, and I'm, I'm a basic Taco Bell guy, just soft tacos, but I get like eight of them. And just devouring uh, things. Yeah, you don't Diablo get, sauce, very underrated. Like grilled burritos or like the chalupas or anything. Nope, like? just soft tacos, beef soft tacos. Boom, eight. I eat like four sitting, put four in the fridge, eat them two hours later, done. It. See, done. I'll, get, I'll get some steak soft, but then I'll get a burrito. I'll get those nachos bel grande. I put all the hot shit on top of them. Yeah, you got to make a piece out of Taco Bell. Dude, th- th- here's the thing, like Grub Grubhub kills me, by the way. Oh, you can't, dude. Grubhub will charge you four dollars a taco. Dude, yeah, for a ta- yeah, per taco. Yeah. Per, it, it's not the taco, it's the fees afterwards. That's what I'm saying. Like the fees, it, it's just four dollars per taco. That's the it, fee. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's just a great point. Um <laughs> <laughs> all right, O'Shea Edwards. Uh, real quick, I need I need some positivity. I need some goals. I need some some future uh of O'Shea Edwards talk. Give me all the goals of Shane Taylor Promotions and yourself individually. Like, what what is your mission now? Uh, a part of Shane Taylor, our goal is to be the one of the most cohesive groups, not so much a ring of honor, but in the, in the just in the business of wrestling altogether. Um, 
you know, we want to be like we are, like I said, man, I said before, like we're great individually, man, but you put us together and we're, we're, we're just a machine. Like you're not going to stop the machine. Um, we're trying to solidify the six man titles as legit. You know, um, we're trying to take over the tag division as legit. You know, um, we're, we're, we're trying to capture everything. We're trying to be a part of everything. We want our names in the conversation. We're not trying to be a part of the conversation. We want to be you know, the, the conversation. Um, and that's within Ring of Honor. That's within the independence. It's, it doesn't matter. It's what we're trying to do. Like individually within Ring of Honor, man, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be recognized as one of the greatest wrestlers in the world. Um, I'm like I said, I'm not pure. And that's perfectly fine with me. It's it's cool. But like, if you step in the ring with me, man, like, hey, win, lose, or draw, man, you, you do not like lead the same cat. You just don't, because I'm not, I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to like uh, some things, man, you break, just don't get fixed. You know what I'm saying? Just don't get fixed. Um, but like the television title, I want it. You know, I want to ask my name in those plates, man. I, I want to be one of the greatest, you know, to ever hold it. And then when that's done, I want the world title. I want to go against everybody. I'm a grown man. I ain't afraid of nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I've gotten my ass kicked before and I've doled out some ass kickers too. So I'm like, yo, what of it? Like what you going to do to me? Ain't nobody ever done it before. And then, like, just outside of Ring of Honor, man, I want to take over the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be in Germany. I want to be in England. I want to be in Mexico. I want to be in Japan. I'm like, I want you to see me and know that, yo, when this dude shows up, man, yo, this dude ain't playing around. This guy's about his business. And, like, my business is putting you in the dirt. Hey, man, sorry for you. Like, don't take this personally. But this is the way it's got to go down. And if you don't like it, yo, try, try to stop me. We'll see where we go from there. I love it. Straight fire. O'Shea Edwards at Big Bad Kaiju on the Twitter all day. Damn O'Shea on the Facebook and Instagram. O'Shea, this has been a pleasure, my friend. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to this, man. O'Shea. Yo. Top five. <laughs> Ten years. Top five guest. <laughs> that means Kevin likes you. It's all good. <laughs> I, I, I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us, O'Shea. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Y'all be good, man. Thank you. Be well. Mm -hmm. You can catch O'Shea Edwards and everyone from Shane Taylor Promotions, of course, at Ring of Honor. Uh, Ring of Honor is over at the uh, Ring of Honor Honor Club on uh, ROHWrestling.com. Catch all of the stuff, plus some little extra things over on YouTube. And Best in the World was two weeks ago. Matt and the crew had a great time over there. So, yeah. What can you say? Kev, I think you're you're on to something, bro. Top five. I got it. We got to figure out how to make that. Oh, we'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, top five, easily top five, without a doubt, easily top five. We, you, you might be onto something. I think we need top five shirts for guests. That's, that's like exactly that. where I was going. What you're thinking, but I'm a lazy bastard who doesn't have to, who doesn't, who doesn't follow up on t-shirt requests. Listen, you and me both. I mean, we've we've got other things that we need to start planning that I haven't even fucking sniffed yet. So, Sniffing. whatever. It is. I'm too busy sniffing the shit that's coming out of my fucking upstairs, which is in shambles right I, now. All I'm doing is looking behind you, and I see you, and then to your immediate right is freaking okay. Gino. So Gino, I'm looking. Gino Guts. It's, it's Gino, and then it's and then it's just half of you with the WCW tag oh, title. I don't see the whole Gino, picture. So it's it's Mikey Whipwreck. It's me and my grandmother. There's Casey Catal next to Mikey Whipwreck. Uh, JTG over there. Rest in peace, Dell, the Patriot Wilkes. Um, oh, no, I, I was there last week, Tony. I remember. Nick, all right, I'm just pointing them out for the people. Yeah. Who are watching the I, it's just funny. All I keep doing is looking over your shoulder and seeing freaking Gino, Kev. who I love. Who's my who's my wingman down in uh, AC, by the way? Egan's on one side, elementary on the other. All I'm saying is anniversary shows are a good time. Might have to pop one of those elementary hack and sack ales. Kev, you know what we could pop? We could pop some Slammiversary talk. We can pop some money in the bank talk. We could top some more, pop some more tops on everything, including Slice Boogie coming up at 9 o'clock. Kev, it's about that time. What do we always say? Speaking of Gino Gatz, back after this. We know you love shopping at Amazon, and we also know you love listening to The Shining Wizards. That's why you're hearing this commercial right now. But were you aware that you could combine the two, do all your shopping, and support the show at the same time? Well, of course you can. Instead of going to Amazon.com, go to Amazon.ShiningWizards.com and make your purchases the way you normally would. 
you're going to get the same great low prices and a portion of whatever you purchase is going to go to support the shining wizards how great is that you by purchasing anything that you normally would anyway is going to support us that's a win-win in my book so from now on when you shop at amazon go to amazon.shiningwizards.com or click the banner on our website and do all of your shopping with the shining wizards Because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens, and because of the crisis which is even now developing, this radio station will remain on the air day and night. This station and hundreds of other radio and TV stations throughout this part of the country are pooling their resources through an emergency network hookup to keep you informed of all developments. Horns up, everyone. When on the Shining Wizards Network, be sure every Friday to check out Radioactive Metal. Radioactive Metal is one of the longest running podcasts on the interweb. And every week we bring you a fist full of metal, including interviews with all your favorite artists, discuss all the metal news, and feature the best tunes on the air today. So grab a Lemmy, join your cool Uncle Snowy, and co-host Aaron in the pit. Your recognized symbol of excellence in sports entertainment broadcasting from the current to the way back. Join the impact player Phil Rea and the Portuguese Man of War Choppy for the Turnbuckle Throwbacks Wrestling Podcast. Live every week on RantEMRadio.com. Get all our episodes over at iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Audio Boom, Google Play, ShiningWizardsNetwork.com, and TurnbuckleThrowbacks.com. Are you tired of being told what to think and believe by Hollywood elites and politicians who just don't care about you? Tired of not getting the truth when you watch the news? Tired of trying to figure out what pronoun to use? Tired of mob mentality when all you want to do is think for yourself and make up your own mind? That's where we come in. This is Justin. And Vince. Your hosts of Inconclusive Breakdown. We are a weekly anti-PC podcast bringing you entertainment and current event news without any spin. If you want to truly stay informed on what's going on in the world, then give us a listen every Sunday anywhere you get podcasts at least till Zuckerberg and Twitter Jack deplatform us and as always we're proud members of the Shining Wizards Network tired of the PC police telling you what you can and cannot say want a show that travels back to the 80s and 90s where the badass hosts have beaten down cancel culture on three separate occasions and carried on to gloat about it since 2013 the midnight jury is that show travel back to the malls and arcades pop in your vhs and join us where the 80s and 90s return from the dead conan tell them where to find us WLWstudios.com, home of the Midnight Jury podcast, hosted by Midnight Mike and Calvin Brody. Also available on all major podcast platforms via the Shining Wizards Network. And join in the conversation on Twitter at Midnight Jury. What's up, wrestling fans? You want something awesome? Check out Wrestling Night in Canada here on the Shining Wizards Network. We're three Canadian metalheads uniting for the love of pro wrestling. Every episode, we go over all the latest news and special events with the odd, unique interview as well. So grab a cold one and check out Wrestling Night in Canada, eh? Are you tired of being uninformed? Together, we can change all of that. Experience a podcast like you've never heard before. You'll gain knowledge, have some laughs, because we believe this is the last AEW podcast you'll ever need. Join us every Wednesday night at 10.15 p.m. on RantEMRadio.com and Facebook Live. We can also be found on all major podcast forums as part of the Shining Wizards Network. So stop listening to inferior AEW podcasts and bring a new podcast into your life by joining us. Join the Mark Order Podcast. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Mark Order Pod and on Facebook.com slash Mark Order Pod. Don't forget to tag us on social media 
and use hashtag join the mark order because if you don't find us, we will find you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. My name is Thomas, and what's your name? Uh, I'm Alan. Alan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're brothers. That's right. Yeah. yeah the that. mother, same mother and father. Your room was. Oh, we shared a room. Shared a room. We right. shared a room. I thought I knew your face. Yeah, we so go maybe. way back, mate. Yeah. yeah. We should do a podcast then. Uh, we have. We do do a podcast. We do a podcast. What's it called? The Roadcast. Roadcast. Yeah, that was planned. Yeah, no, yeah, well. What do we do? Well, we cover all different things in the world of pop culture. We're talking about comic books, we're talking about professional wrestling, and we're talking about movies. Go back and watch classic retro wrestling events, the likes of WWE, WCW. And if you do like that, you can check us out on Apple iTunes, also on Podbean, Anchor, and on Podknife. Also check us out on Twitter, at The Broadcast. That's B R O. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, the ending. Hey, it's all right. Good on you. Yeah. Instagram also at the Broadcast Podcast. Remember, we don't spell it with a C, we spell it with a K. So, you might take it easy. Step out of the Your time is up. My time is now. I guess I got to lower this shit. I got to lower this to tell you guys about what it takes to be part of the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast Patreon crew. All you got to do is go over to patreon.com slash wizard podcast. And for as little as one dollarino, one shekel, one cronin, whatever the equivalent is of a dollar. I don't even know what it's worth these days. It might even be worth a loony or a toony. I don't know because I'm fucking daffy myself. Oh, anyway, a loony and a toony? Oh, shit, Kevin, you're back? What the fuck, dude? You scared the shit out of me. But That's don't right. scare me anymore, Kev, because I'm telling the people about Patreon. <laughs> Kev, there's as little as one dollar they could join us. You get mentioned every single week as one of our Patreon producers. Three dollars is your best bet because you get four bonus episodes each month. And we know we don't have them yet for July, but they're coming. Don't worry. Life is catching up, but we'll catch up. That's fine. You can get boxes of wizardry. You get plugs every week. It's all over there. Patreon.com slash wizard podcast. Kevin, right now, we want to thank those who continue to support us here at the Shiny Wizard Wrestling Podcast. I want to start out with the king and the queen, Manny Kratzo and Kathy Hummer. Woo! Two other knuckleheads, Danny and Anthony, the Rusinellos, the AOP of the SWP. Ryan Arthur over at Elementary Brewing Company, elementary.com. Local brew, Hackensack, New Jersey. Go pick some up and pick up some of the seltzer too because that shit was fire. Our Sean buddies, Sean Toe, Sean Kaleo, Kevin, Brett Simonello. Uh -huh. What do you hear? What do you say? Thanks. Was I was good. muted. Kate the Great Hensler over at OnDeckIC.com. You got something you want to promote. You got something you wanted to do for you. Freaking Send it over to Kate and she'll do it. Freaking KTG, man. KTG's blowing up. She might be like, she might be the, the next like big like celebrity. I don't get it, dude. How come you don't <laughs> <Snap> never... <laughs> How come Sean Rob Sap, Sap Ross, whatever his name is, never asked me to do a show with him? I don't like this. I listen. This is this is wild. She's gonna. She's listen. We might have to hitch our wagon to her star. Me. It's not you. I mean, I'm me handsome. too. It's not. Hashtag me too. No. Yeah. Me too. Matt Garifo, no relation to the K J G. Maddie Mellinger, woo! Christine Friesendorf, Mark Parloni. Oh, happy birthday, Mark! Come on, Kev. You gotta know my gimmicks over here. Mr. Scott drinks more himself. Kenny Hawsey, Jake Cop, the big cop of pump. Happy anniversary again to Turnbuckle. Well, well, the, the only one worthy of supporting over at the at, at the Turnbuckle Throwbacks. He's the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I like everyone else is a piece of shit. <laughs> Thomas Cops, the Moot Spock. Yeah. The, the man of many names. Of course he is. Milwaukee Cam, yeah. Uh, Michael Hammond, David Henry Bauer III, his pal Antonio Horseman makes experimental music at harvestmanrecords.bandcamp.com. Matthew Birch, the uh, true prince of pro. Braden Bergeron, is he the guy that fucking collects the LeBron James figures? I don't know. Ryan Schlong with a little tip of the schlong. Our boy Roll, our boy Brendan Heaney, our girl Carrie Cowling. And last, wait a minute, hold on. We'll get there. Look at these babies. Santana Ortiz, ah. fi finally got my first AE dub fix. Kev, last but not least, Mr. William Mercier Jr. Lives are going to be in William Mercier's hands. You know what I mean? Kevin, I do know what you mean. Absolutely, I know what you mean. Wait, you don't we have to say more things? What? Doesn't he have other stuff that we have to say? 
I don't know. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think that's it. That's our plugs. Wizards podcast over. But at- wasn't that the whole point of, of ruining the gimmick that we have more stuff to say because then I wouldn't be able uh-huh. to get that in. Nope. It's already in Kev. You missed it. You weren't listening. It's already in. No, nah, I definitely was not listening. You were not listening, sir. Yo, I, you know what? I don't like, I don't like being in this position Uh oh. because my legs are not akimbo, but seriously, akimbo. Uh, my head looks so shiny. These lights over here don't do my beautiful face justice. Oh, no, sure don't. They made you got a hell of a mug. Fucking poster boy for Clearasil over here. It's ridiculous. Yeah, you're talking to the guy with the worst skin in the world. No, nah, dude, you, dude, you're not nearly as shiny as this shit. Look yeah, but you. I get red. I get red. All I, I, I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm always red. It's like fucking widow's peak over here. Oh, oh yeah, you got a, you got a good uh, black widow's peak there. I look like that guy from Vitas, like with that pointy thing on. His don't head. know what that is. <laughs> is that a band? Yeah, it's a, well, it's a guy. He's from, I want to say he's from Russia. I don't I'm going to say Finland. I'm going to say he's Maestro's boy. He makes a reindeer stew. <laughs> he makes, he's a he Swedish makes, chef, actually. He feeds a team. That's, that's who he is. No, the bird. Bork, bork, bork. Bork, bork, bork. Here's the chocolate mousse. Here's going off. I've seen a bit of the chocolate. And then he's going to the mousse. And an actual mousse comes in. I love the Muppets, man. Muppets rule. Yeah, I do have a, I do have a hard time watching them again, on um, Disney on Plus. Disney Plus, yeah. I don't know, man. It's Why? not that they're, they're, it's not that they're bad. It's just like I start watching them, and then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm not in the mood to watch this. It's like, yeah, really weird. it's. And here's the thing: like, it wasn't like a show for kids then, but like even as an adult now, and I listen, I love the Muppets. Like, it's to me, it's like wrestling Muppets and the monkeys, like. That those are my those are my things. I didn't know you were a big monkey. Oh, dude, the monkeys nuts. Who's your Love favorite? Monkey. Huh? Who's your favorite? Oh, Mike Nesmith. Really? Green Bonnet. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I would have pegged you as a Peter Tork guy myself. Peter Tork was number two. Oh, that means he's poop. That's it. Peter poop. Pooper Tork. Peter Pooper. R.I.P. R.I.P. Actually, to Davy and Peter. Davy Jones They're- died. Wait, they still have two? I thought they were down to one. No, Mike Nesmith and Mickey Dolans are still alive, God. and they're going and they're going on a retirement tour. Of course. Listen, I, in here, I think I've told the story before, but my tie-in monkeys in wrestling is how I discovered uh, the monkeys later on because my parents taped a, a marathon on MTV. Yes, they did come back to MTV. Girls I was in grammar school with were watching them as they were airing. Come and on. during the marathon, the commercial that they would play on loop a lot was the commercial for the Slammies. Oh, like nice. where they're all like singing on one side or the other, and like Bobby <laughs> Heenan gets <laughs> and Bobby Heenan gets the drum slammed over his head. Like, nice. so like it's such a weird tie in. Like, and I'm pretty sure I was already a wrestling fan at this point, I had to have been so. Like I, I would always like rewind the commercials just to watch the Slammys commercial again, and and this is when we still had the the VCR with the the remote with the wire. Oh that, my god! That you couldn't go old school, dude. I'm telling you, it's it's insane. Like I, how much I would rewind. Dude, do you remember having to set the VCR to tape something? I I remember, dude. Did your VCR have little wheelie? Things to tune in the stations individually because we had that shit. We didn't. No, have we didn't have the wheelies. We, we had we had little buttons, I think. Yeah, but you had to program the buttons. Like you yes. had to open the panel and turn the little knobs and flick the switches to get UHF or VHF. We had the thing. We had the little gimmick on the side of the TV that we had the switch. Like we had the switch. Hmm. Like um. God, I think that's what I think it was for the VCR, but it was like literally like the thing. It was like a little weird thing that you had to switch to get to make sure the vcr was on and it would sync up with the tv so you yeah so you probably had a setup where you could put something on the vcr and watch something different while it was taping yeah yes yeah see that's what it was like kids old school now pay attention dude i still had a vcr in the monday night war yes well i think we all did so that's what i would do yeah so 
So what? You yeah, need, I think we did too. I think yeah, DVDs like, weren't there. I think like yeah. nowadays, you press a button on a DVR, you can record it and then watch whatever the fuck you want. But back in the day, when you had the cable just coming into your house, you'd have to, if you put it through the cable box, then the VCR, then the TV, whatever you watched on cable is what you recorded. So if you wanted to record yeah. something, you had to make sure it was on that channel. Otherwise, it would record whatever the fucking channel it was on. Yeah, no, we, I think we were, this was got to be, God, 80 maybe 9 89 90 we saw like we had maybe yeah. the vcr going up until god knows how long yeah but, but what you used to have to do was split the cable send one to the cable box and then one to the vcr and your vcr you had to tune in the channels and then both to the tv i think that's what i think that's what we had and you had to flip the switch yeah you flip the switch to watch the cable box or the switch to watch the yes, VCR. yes 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 nope. 100 100% awful the That's shit, exactly had, what it was. Shit, you had to learn how to figure out how to record wrestling and not interfere with somebody watching. Dude, and, and like we had to set like, and the worst thing ever is when I remember like, because I would always watch Raw and tape Nitro, right? Or I'd, I'd go back and forth. and But I would always watch the majority of Raw and tape Nitro until like the NWO and everything got hot and everything was crazy. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I remember the worst thing ever because you had to set like AM, PM. It's just, it's just like an alarm clock. Yep. And so like, I'm waking up like uh, the next morning to watch some of Nitro before school. And it's like last week's Nitro because I had it set for like 11 o'clock the morning that didn't happen yet. So it was like, that was like the, like the like I was in a bad mood all day. Like if I couldn't get Nitro before, like a little, at least the first hour of Nitro before school, I, don't talk to me, bro. Kev, I'm going to, I'm going to give you more of a nightmare. I used to set the VCR. We had a wheel in, and dial in all the channels that we wanted. And then we had this little panel that would slide out and you would put the number of the channel in. So when the button glowed, you knew what channel it was on. And yeah. nothing was worse than setting the VCR, triple checking everything, going to bed before 1130 on a Saturday night and then waking and not up Sunday getting morning. Porn. And there was nothing. There, it, whatever you recorded was definitely not Saturday night's main event. What a oh heartbreak. God. Because there was, no, there was no other way to watch it. It's not like they reran the damn thing. Yeah. So if you didn't record it and you didn't stay up for it, you were shit out of luck. I'm trying to remember if I ever, or if I was even old enough to like know how to tape during Saturday night's main event. I don't think I was. Like I'd have to ask my dad or, or my mom to do it. I, I love my grandparents to death. Love my grandfather. I miss him dearly. Love my grandmother. She's 89. Uh, when I was a kid. I would beg to go stay at their house because they would let you stay up till whenever the frick you wanted I, because they had a TV in the second bedroom, the bedroom. Yes. And I would stay up and just watch Saturday night's main event. I'd be up till one in the morning they'd be sleeping in the next room and have the TV on real quiet. Dude, my grandparents house, <laughs> the, this, they had a huge house. I don't know how they got away with it. It was huge. It was actually a two family that ended up, they just made it their own. My grandfather was a postal worker forever, and he was a janitor. Um, but the, and my 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 grandmother worked for the board of education as a secretary. But they they had this house right by the rock bottom. Remember the rock bottom in oh, West yeah, Orange? Yeah. It was literally right there. Like, but uh, and it was a huge house. But and they had you know like six bedrooms upstairs, and the one that we would always sleep in had a little little like 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 college boy VCR TV combo or whatever. No, but it wasn't a combo. It was just the size. It was like a 13 inch. But I remember watching, I watched the first Nitro live because Raw was preempted. And then I watched the first Nitro again in that room. Literally, it was like the latest I stayed up in my life at that point in 1995. I was 12. It was like, oh God, Tony, that's so, that's so crazy. Like I would never get away with that at home. And I get so pissed because I'd, I'd watch all the excitement is in the first half hour of the of Saturday night's main event. And then by 1245, it's like Kamala versus like George Wells. And I'm like, why am I still staying up? Yeah. Cause, <laughs> Cause yeah. Cause it came on after Saturday night live. And I've heard Bruce Pritchard talk about this a lot. It was like, you got to put the main event on first to keep people there. Like, cause you want that number. And then yeah. you're, dude, you're so right. Like <laughs> there's like the main event, like the, the closing match would be like, Tito Santana versus and Tito Santana. And I know how you feel about Tito Santana. I'm not shitting on Tito Santana, legend, Hall of Famer, one of the goats. 
All but right. it would be Tito Santana against like an up and coming like I don't know like King yeah Tom Bundy or something like that. Like the Bushwhackers and the Rujo brothers would close like a Saturday night's main event, and like Hulk Hogan and Mr. Perfect would start it or something like that. Yeah, the genius. Yeah. yeah, Hogan and Orndorff in the cage, eleven eleven thirty five. Dude, you know what else would piss me off? You record it and then you fuck up your dates and you record an awful episode of Saturday Night Live. Like That's I was I got not, no, it was good at the time, but I was not into it at the time because I was like, I, I just didn't give a shit. I wanted to see wrestling. I was a little rascal boy. I would uh, I would always start the taping. If I had to tape Raw, I would start it at like, I would start at like, no, I would start it on time, but I would keep it going later because we all know what came on after Raw. Oh, Silk Stalking. Silk stalkings leg on, like on bench. bench and Dude. the first four minutes of silk stockings was like yep. preteen porn yep. it was like no not not pre you know what i mean like it was porn for it was clothes it was everything it was uh uh yeah so oh god the vcr man what i'm actually looking at a vcr right now Yep, and set and setting it up for eleven twenty five, and you'd always catch like the last four or five minutes of the eleven o'clock news, Ooh. and then you'd get you'd get Saturday Night Live is preempted, so we could bring you the pre recorded edition of Saturday Night's main event, and then it'd go into like that, and then do the interviews, and then of course, if you're old school like me, you Uh-oh. got an emotion obsession, emotion obsession, and emotion. That, that was the original theme before they went into the bam, 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 bam. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was the one, but you, you don't remember Animotion. I do. I got to play this now. No, yeah. I do. I remember it. You got to go down memory lane. Silk Stalkings was porn for a young male. It was incredible. A lot of, a lot of boobs and bras and legs on benches. There you go, Kev. Oh, yeah, of course. I can't hear it. Oh, you can't? Let me turn this shit up. How about now? Yeah. Seeing Hogan coming out, pointing, waving the American flag, fucking doing all the flexing and I shit. Think, I think they just added all of these back to Peacock, and I think that they're actually still differentiated from, like, the event or the main event to Saturday night's main event. I think they're two different categories. I still, I still don't like how everything is by seasons on Peacock. It's the worst. Like WrestleMania it's, it's, one is like season one of WrestleMania. It's did like, you do the upgrade yet or no? No, have you? To, to, no, I haven't, but I think I might. I don't know. From from what I understand, the pay per view yesterday had a lot of issues for a lot of people. Is that mm. not the case? No, no, it, it's the case. My dear good friends over at PW Insider <laughs> reported. I know, Dave Legre- I know Dave LaGreca was fucking having an aneurysm last night trying to watch it. I I was out drinking last night, so I didn't watch it live. So uh I watched it today, and uh, I had no issues with the delay. What's that? Before we get there, let's talk Slammiversary. Let's do it, baby. You want to get right into the uh, the meat and potatoes? Yes. Please tell me everything about it, just because. Oh, you want to do you want to do picks first, or you want to do meat and? Potatoes? Yeah, I mean, I think they all tie in together, so you might as well play it. All righty, let's do that. I, if I could fucking find the right software, here we go. It's time for the pay-per-view pick extravaganza. Is that nice and loud for you? Oh, it was beautiful. That was a thing of beauty right there, T-Donk. All right, Slammiversary in the books, 2021. Hell of a show. First crowd for, uh, first show back for Impact Wrestling with the crowd in a very, very long time. Uh, featured bouts. A lot, of, a lot of surprises. Kenny Omega, Sammy Callahan, obviously, was the main event. We'll start there. Um, I'll give the numbers of how we did for this show. It's not that hard, and it won't take that long. We all went four and four. So we all broke even on this show, and I'll pull up the picks right now. If my phone allows, here wait, we, we go. All, wait, we all went four and four? Yes. Wow. That's so, terrible. Tony. You had, actually, I'll start with Max. That's the first text. Uh, Matt had Cardona and mystery partner, which turned out to be his fiance, Chelsea Green. Dear good friends over at the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. We all picked that one, no? Yes, we had it. We all had it. I'm just going, I'm literally reading through the text, so I'm not, I don't have on a, on a, on a sheet. Um, we all had William Morrissey, winner. Good call. 
you had fire and flavor as did i matt actually had havoc and rosemary and they won um which is i I, listen i love both teams i think i i don't understand that decision quite yet i don't as as big a fan as i am of them i thought the money is in jordan grace and rachel ellering verse fire and flavor and who knows i mean it could happen at some point maybe they but beat- it's, so, it's so weird because fire and flavor is like the established team and they fucking just been flip-flopping these titles they've been cut kind of, they haven't flip-flopping you're right but they've been kind of working the angle with with havoc and rosemary about is havoc and decay like is is it, I, I don't hate that move i just was very very surprised by it all right so the good brothers won the 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 four team tag match and of course our dear good friend Falaba had a mystery partner because TJP was hurt. And of course, that turned out to be no way, comma, Jose. <laughs> I was like, how are they getting away with this? Like, how, like, how is Fala like, I'm like, is Fala going to get in trouble? Like, cause he's a no way, Jose, but he was like, there's no way, Jose. I guess you can do that, right? I, listen, maybe their legal department cleared it. I, I guess. Uh, yeah, Fala's no dope. Um, so, all right. So, Violent by Design did not retain. The Good Brothers snuck out with that one. I don't uh, understand that either. I it, it just bolsters the image of, of the three of them, and we'll get to that. Kenny Omega obviously yeah, I, retaining, I, which I, you and I both had, but Matt had Sammy Callahan, which oh. I was that was I was on the fence about that one for a very long time. Good thing you didn't. You know what? I mean, that, if anything was going to happen with a title change, it was going to be that one, at least in my eyes. It but. just depends. Like, it's like, do you, as long as this relationship between AEW and Impact is a thing, you, you can't, you got to keep Kenny Omega strong. But I just don't, I don't know. Like, how, like, how, how would it look for him on AEW if he loses to somebody on Impact? But that's the thing. Like, do you already made Impact second fiddle to AEW? And like, I don't understand. Like, I mean, it is. But then who's going to beat Kenny? All right. So. But, but no, then, that's no disrespect to Impact. It's my favorite show on TV. No, right but to now. go to your point though, like, but that's a complete sign of disrespect, and it's not the fact that you said it; it's the fact that that AEW has put Impact in that position. Don't well, you because agree? Impact needs AEW more than AEW needs Impact. I get. And like, I don't even know what the numbers are. I don't even know how good they do. With that's this. the one. That's the one cog in this whole machine that I'm not crazy about. What the Forbidden Door? No, it's 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 the door between AEW and we could talk about that forbidden door because baby, dude, it's like, but it's like, do you even know what? Do you even know what happened at the end of the show? Oh, I know what happened. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And fuck Jay White anyway. Um, <laughs> fucking asshole, idiot. Anyway, I fucking hate him, and I, I I I loathe the fact that I know Matt's fucking creaming his jeans over it. I can't stand it. But the thing. That's like the one cog in the wheel in, in the in the in the works that I have a problem with. Like, like I know Deanna Prazu like won, and uh, Mickey James came out to invite her to NWA. Like, that shit to me makes sense. Kenny yeah. Omega just fucking destroying Impact that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, but he didn't destroy it. It was a great yeah. match. No, of course it's gonna be a great match. It's it's Kenny Omega. And Sammy got a lot in. I I get it, but you know, then again. You know, some lesser people on AEW shows get a lot in on Kenny Omega too. So, all right. So let's get let's get back to picks here. Um, we, I think we all we all no 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 not we all had Moose, but Moose oh, lost cool. to Chris Sabin, which was the shocker of the night to yeah, me. Yeah, that's that's yeah. That was one I did not expect to happen. Uh, you and I had Chris Bay winning the X Division Championship. Matt had Josh Alexander, which he won. Josh Alexander retained. A lot of Chris Bay was a focal point of a lot of story t- uh, storytelling in terms of is he a good guy is he a bad guy who is he siding with, so that was another to- that was another toss up for me between who I was going to pick. I think they really like Josh Alexander, so it makes sense to me to keep him uh, with this. I think I mentioned everything. We mentioned Diana yeah. Perazzo wins yeah. against uh, Thunder Rosa showing up. Oh, another one. Yeah. Another so, one. Uh, uh, that's great. Uh, uh, on a personal note, uh, you know, I love the. I think Cardona and and Brian are gonna have a good story. I think they have to have a blow off single at so some here's, point. Here, here's what I see happening, right? So Mickey James invites Deanna Parazu for this Empowered pay per view. Right. Mickey James has said she's not gonna wrestle on the Empowered pay per view. Okay. So to me, I think we're gonna get an Impact Championship match 
at NWA 73 the next night. I think Mickey James challenges Deanna Peraza at that point. At 73? Yeah, because they're back-to-back nights. All so right, what, so what, what's, what's the show? Empower. So it's Empower and 73 are back-to-back. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So gotcha, now gotcha. Mickey James has said that, and Matt clarified for me, that she does. she's not wrestling on Empower because she's the executive producer, but she wants to wrestle at NWA 73. And I don't think Mickey James in the position that she is in would be such a bad thing. I think it would be a great thing if she winds up losing to Deanna at NWA 73 to build up Deanna Perazu. That only makes sense. Oh, no. Yeah. If Mickey James is fighting Deanna for the, for the Impact Ch- Championship, Mickey James is not winning it. I mean, I wouldn't, it wouldn't blow me away where it would be like, that's a stupid move. But oh no, I'd have, I'd have a harder time grabbing that. And I would have it, Dion, excuse me, beat a legend like Mickey James. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah, no, 100%. And listen, I've been wrong. Listen, just this pay per view alone, I've been, I was wrong four times. So, how do we all go four and four? I, th- I really thought that we pulled ahead from Matt on this one, but no, I guess we didn't. No, because, all right. So, you, Cardona, and oh, no, I get, it. I get it. It's, mm-hmm. I, I believe it. I was just kind of surprised. Yeah. Like, I really thought I, thought I did worse, to be honest with you. I thought I had a losing showing. I thought, well, I know we had the same showing because as soon as you fucking showed me your picks, I was like, son of a bitch. Yeah, I, I sent them. I I take the screenshot because I do it earlier at some point, and I don't I don't read yours. I don't read your guys' picks. <laughs> so, I just uh, how you get so angry when I'm like, thanks for taking my picks. You're like, fuck you, Tony. Yeah. Listen, I take the listen. For someone who's terrible at everything, I am extremely competitive. Like I, oh, I am, oh, I am very competitive, oh, but I suck at everything. Great, fine, enjoy your belt. I hope you're happy. Yeah, that's it. I was talking <laughs> shit to Matt all week about. Listen, he, listen, he's ducking me. That's the only reason why he's not here right now. He fuck knew the rematch was coming. Fuck him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. All right, so we all went four and four for Impact. Uh, I love the show. It was cool, actually. Uh, was able to watch it live on Fight TV because the weather was shitty. So I was like, I'm not going out. Ugh. So I watched it live. And then, uh, so then Tony, there was another pay per view. Jesus, Kev, I hate these weekends. I loved it. Oh, I know you loved it because you fucking won, you cocksuckers. The Charlie Wizards pay per view extravaganza part two. Money in the bank. All right, of that. All right. So the money in the bank results are in. We just got it in from the board. Let's see. And by board, I mean my text message from two hours ago. Um, let's see. Where are they? 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 Okay. So. So now, wait. So going into Money in the Bank, Kevin and I are still tied, and Matt doesn't lose or gain any position. So he's like 45 back. Okay. So I didn't – I tried to listen to last week – well, I did listen to last week's show and tried to get the number. We don't – we never actually mentioned the record. So I don't know what the match like, – are, but you can figure out how many games back we are based on what we said last week. You and me were tied. Matt said he was 15 back after Ring of Honor. So going into this weekend, Matt was 15 back. And everything, is, stu- everything stood the same after Saturday. Everything- after Saturday, everything stood the same. Um, but to, but Sunday was a whole different ball game, my boys. So, dude, some of these results are real fucking head scratchers. I don't, I don't agree at all. I know you don't because you fucking won. No, no. We, well... The only and the one that I got wrong for those. All right, so here we go. The results, real quick. Matt went three and four, the only one with the losing record. Uh, Tony went four and three. I went six and one, and the only one I picked wrong was the absolute long shot. And I picked Shinsuke Nakamura to win the men's money in the bank when everyone knew it was probably going to be Big E. Well, and, uh, bad consideration on your part, I guess. I listen, you know what? Because I, I I watched SmackDown on Friday and with the live crowd back and the, the reaction Shinsuke got and everyone doing the whoa, 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 whoa like it just it like it made me think like all right. Every now and then they pull a dark horse out and make them win money in the bank. So you think you think uh Eric Boogs and Shinsuke oh, were gonna... God. I don't get that at all. Rick what, you Boogs? Like Boogs? <sighs> I, I mean, it's cool. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, Boogs is the same idiot that used to come out with the rock scream. Remember a couple years ago? Yes. Oh, I definitely remember. I know exactly who he is. <laughs> but this just like, 
the pairing is it's not the worst thing in the world but it's just it just doesn't fit i guess i get it having a live guitar every single time shinsuke comes out is fine it, it works but first of all he's really, really not that good yeah. like you know what i mean like i'd rather have that violinist guy that was out a couple times back in the day hire him that violinist guy is probably very expensive <laughs> probably right and this is what's going to stink is that at some point Boogs is going to have to wrestle and they're probably going to make Shinsuke and Boogs a tag team Boogs and now I'm just like now I'm like really really angry <laughs> like they're going to make him a tag team where Shinsuke should be I mean listen I'm happy for Big E but I'll tell you I'll tell you something else too Uh-oh. about Big E Biggest, well, I've been a fan of his forever when he forever, won forever. I was like I don't see it. Maybe because I haven't watched in a while, but I was like, man, I just don't get that top guy vibe from him. You know what it is too? Like, and and, and, and I used to have it. It's contradictory because when you look at him as part of New Day and he's always smiling and he's always joking, it's hard to take him seriously. Like Bobby Lashley looks like fucking Squidward, but Bobby Lashley is always doing serious shit. Yeah. So when you see Bobby Lashley come to the ring, you know shit's on. Yeah, like Bobby you Lashley. You don't get that vibe from Big E. Bobby <laughs> Lashley, Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre, big boy shit. Well, but, except for when Drew McIntyre is pulling fucking swords out of the stage or whatever the fuck. Yeah, that yeah, I could do without that. But you know what I'm, you know what I mean. Like Bobby Lashley, Roman Reigns, uh, probably like who who who's the third guy I said? Uh, Bobby Lashley, Roman, Drew McIntyre. Yeah. Um. Actually, you know what? I don't even know if I see top guy and Drew McIntyre anymore. Yeah, they kind of shit the bed with him. They kind of. Bro- I mean, obviously Brock Lesnar when he comes back, but he they they missed the opportunity when the fucking pandemic hit. Like that yeah, that was- and I I feel like that killed Drew McIntyre. Well, because he's gonna now he's in a feud with Ginger Mahal. Well, that's the thing. Like they also give him like fuck all to do. You know, it's like they're giving him the like, yeah. dumb things to do. Like, look, Ginger Mahal. Former WWE champion. I love. Yeah, but come on. No, I I understand. Yeah, but come on. But former WWE champion. I enjoyed his run, but you're absolutely right. Come on. Yeah, well, like, All we need is Heath Slater back, and we got fucking three ways for the three man band. Dude, God, I hope Heath Slater comes back at some point. And he's hurt. He's. I don't know if he's. I don't know. I hope he comes he, back he, soon. He anyway, for a long time from Impact. No. Yeah. He's well. He got. He had. He got hurt in that Battle Royal. Or that rumble gimmick match, and he hasn't been the same since. Kev, but, I, I, uh, the one thing that surprised me, the Usos. Oh, I saw that coming. I mean, obviously, yeah. right? Because I got the match right, but you know. all right, fucking no. bring your own bell and toot your still own. Not, still not get the I, match right. I don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't get it, Kev. Explain to me why the Usos won. The all right, match. now how we just talked about on Impact, how why the Good Brothers. Won the tag belts. All right, but Kenny for Kenny the, Omega to solidify eight, that. I understand, but the eight hundred pound gorilla in the room. Oh, is, the DUIs. Of course. Yeah. Who cares? No, 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 no. All right. Okay. I was speaking through their eyes. Oh, not you're for Kevin. I know. I get it. I not get, my eyes. I get it, but that I mean, like, I listen. I, I'm not. I'm no saint, but I stopped drinking. I stopped I, going out at having a beer a very long time ago. I, I act disgusted because you're absolutely right. That's that's the thought process, yeah. which I don't understand. I mean, Jeff Hardy gets away with it all the time. And people people got to fucking understand when I'm making a joke out of a serious situation. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like when I say, Jesus, I thought it was bad when AEW kept the guy that sucked dongs around. And like now they just give the tag titles to the Usos. It's like, come on, people. I know the severity of the situations. That's why I made the reference. Yeah, no, you're right. It, it's, of course, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's a joke. No, but, the situation's not a joke, but I'm, no, 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 I'm, I'm saying putting the belt. From, it went from ridiculous to like extreme. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a ridiculous situation compared to an extreme situation. Get the irony. Well, I think, I think this is only, and I'm not saying only as, you know, pejorative or meaningless. It's his second DUI, but his third arrest. And doesn't he have three strikes on him now? Like, like. But it's not a wellness policy violation. It's not. Drinking. 
I mean, a DUI, isn't that? It's not a wellness policy violation. So you can fucking, you could go drunk driving all you want and like never have any kind of repercussions? Like that's what they just- No, that's different. You could have repercussions. They could fire him tomorrow and he'd be totally justified. But I what, guess what they're, what they're, it, I mean, it's not like he was doing steroids or, you know, no, doing coke and failed the drug test. He didn't fail. Dr- it's legal to drink. It's just not legal to drink and drive. So, yeah. and it's not a wellness violation at that point. So, yeah, I, I mean, I guess you're right. It's just, it's, it, it, it's a shitty thing either way. Oh, listen, I'm not saying he, he could be a great guy who just makes terrible, terrible decisions. But he's I've got, done it. But he's got people around him that uh, hopefully I, are... All right. I, again, hence the terrible decisions. I get it. I get it. Um, Kind of surprised that Alexa Bliss got the fucking pops that she did. She's over like Rover. Dude, you want to talk about pops? Naomi got the pop of, the, of that match. You know what? I missed... Naomi's entrance. She got the she got the biggest reaction. Uh, maybe Liv Morgan, but Naomi was right there. I, I missed like that, and she's talented. But that entrance is just the fucking that that's the coup de gras for her, dude. Oh, I mean that's wrestling in twenty twenty one. You got to like look at Finn. I mean Finn's I obviously great, but when they like, when they buried Alexa Bliss, the crowd fucking booed. Oh, yeah, God, dude. And Bliss, like, what they did great with Bliss is that she was out first, I believe. Yeah. And everyone else came in. She was, you you saw her in the background looking at everyone else, deadpan. Yep. Like, creepy as zombie shit, crazy. And the best was everybody powdered, and she's just in the ring, and she just started skipping. Yeah. No, that's a, see, now, here's the thing. How do you ever, I'm sure it's, it's wrestling, so you could always do it, but how do you ever go back? You can. Of course you can. She's under a She's under a spell. She's under a spell from whatever fucking spell Bray Wyatt was under, and it snaps one day. Maybe fucking Nikki being the superhero now snaps her out of it. There's, there's always some way to go. Yeah, of I mean, course. Look, the Undertaker became the American badass for like six years or something yeah. like that. You know what it's I'm a, saying? You can always point. get out of shit. I mean, Kama became a fucking pimp for Christ's sakes. Hmm. I should watch that table for three. Uh, not I table mean, for three. I watched that Stone Cold yesterday. The Rainbow Man became a fucking professional golfer. <laughs> hole in one Barry Darso. <laughs> Love hole in one Barry Darso. Mike Redunda became a sailor for Christ's sakes. And before that, he was a truck driver. <laughs> not Rotundo, Darso. Oh, Black Dar- Top Bully. Yeah, the Black Top Bully. He was demolition. He was a Russian. God, he was a Russian before he was demolition. Yep. Well, he was he was a Russian sympathizer. And he wasn't even the first demolition smash. No, he wasn't. Randy Cully, right? Midnight Express? Yes. Am I wrong? No, or Moon Dog. was not Midnight Express. Moon Dog? Randy Cully was a Moon Dog. Yes. All right. There you go. You're thinking of Dennis Condry. I am thinking of Dennis Condry. Yes. And uh, all right, so to just uh, try it, me and Tony are not tied. I went up two games on Tony with a total combined weekend record of 10 and 5. Matt went eight and seven. No, no, I'm sorry. You went eight and seven. Yep. Matt went the opposite, seven and eight. And I hope these numbers are right. So Matt completely fucked. He fucking fell back another game. Yeah. He's there. I mean, we're what halfway through the year. He's got no shot. So he picked, he picked, uh, <laughs> I mean, come on. We're... Here's the thing he's smart to take chances. But he's not taking good chances. All right. So I agree with that. But I always, no matter what, but I will we, always pick who I think is going to win or who I hope to win. But like, we, despite on the numbers game or anything like that, it's not about like, yeah. it's, it's not about like the math to me. It's about actually getting stuff right. So if I end up losing, but I get everything right, like that's, that's what I'm in it for. Like, I don't do it based on, I mean, there was a time where I was like, I would go to like the Vegas odds and see what they picked and, or what the heavy fate, like what, whatever was, but I stopped doing that a long time. Like, that's not how I want to play this. I'm going to pick who I think is going to win, regardless of what you guys pick, regardless of what, regardless of what, you know, MGM sports or whoever they're in bed with uh, uh, in the gambling community is. 
I'm just going to pick who I think is going to win. And that's how I'm going to play it. Like, that's it. Forever. Uh, Kate is in the uh, Facebook chat. She said, fourth arrest, three DUIs. Three DUIs. I know the one DUI, Naomi was driving. He just got into a fight with everybody, with the cops and everything. This is this has got to be approaching sunny territory for DUIs, no? Listen. I mean, I'm just saying, not shitting on Sunny, but I mean, it's got to be in the ballpark. Listen, alcohol makes you make bad choices. You just got to know better. I mean, you're, I mean, we're all grown ups. Like, that's why I stopped having, like, I won't, I might have like one beer and then that's it. No, I, I, I get That's it. all I'll do. Like, I don't even do it. Like, even if I'm going to freaking Dylan's or the hat, which is like in the same town, I won't do it. Um, all right. So let's go over the, the picks real quick. Nat had the Mysterios, which you got wrong. Biggie. Which you got right, Liv Morgan. Which you got wrong, uh, Lassie. Which you got right, Charlotte Flair. Which you got right, Viking oh. Raiders. Which you got wrong. I will right, we'll talk about it. Viking Raiders. Which you got wrong, and Edge. Who you got wrong? You, Tony, had Biggie. Which you got right, Alexa Bliss. Which you got wrong, Lashley. Which you got right, Reigns. Which you got right, Ripley. Which you got wrong, uh, almost an AJ. Which you got right, and Mysterios. Which you got wrong. I had, get ready for this. Um, <laughs> I had Roman, which I got right. Lassie, which I got right. Charlotte, which I got right. Nikki Cross, which I got right. Shinsuke Nakamura, which I got wrong, but in parentheses, I wrote, might regret this one. And Usos, I got right. And AJ and Omos, I got right. For a six and one, beautiful, beautiful night, pulling ahead two games ahead of the doc, the Dr. Donk himself. Mm, that's right. Drink it in, man. Why don't you just take your pants down and let me fucking? <laughs> because this is this is a family show. Let me give you my Marco stunt impression. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you 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 cringed when I touched on um when I what mentioned sharp. What are we doing, dude? All right, here's why. You know why, Tony? You already know why. Uh, What's the next pay per view? I don't know. SummerSlam. Oh, are they going to wrestle again? Guess who's coming back probably for SummerSlam. Oi, oi, oi. Exactly. Oh, fuck off. Oh, by the way, freaking Christ, we didn't even talk about John Cena coming back. <laughs> As, uh, yeah, we're waiting for our, our next guest, Slice Boogie. So, so we're going to get John Cena against uh, Roman Reigns. Roman we're going to get Reigns. Becky Lynch against Charlotte. And then we're probably going to get Goldberg against Lashley. I forgot about Goldberg. SummerSlam is shaping up, dude. Dude, this is, from what I've read today, like, this is, like, their makeup WrestleMania. Like, this is going to be, like, a WrestleMania event. And SummerSlam kind of has been, like, the the Summer Mania. But this is going to be, this is a big boy show. Is Bad Bunny going to be there again? I hope so. Oh, fuck off. What do you mean? All right. Well, listen. La Playa. One rodeo is enough. No, you probably won't be there. It's in, it's in Vegas, so who knows? Oh, gosh. Uh, who, could they get, who could they get from Vegas? They mm, got to have celebrities, no? At summer? I'm sure they will. Is it going to be Titus Worldwide hosting again? I heard he's actually st- going to wrestle. Ooh, 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 ooh. Somebody, I, I hope he does. I've read somewhere he's going to be wrestling again. Maybe they do a reenactment of him sliding under the ring like at the Greatest Royal Rumble. Titus World Slide. Ooh, I like it. No, I didn't make it up. They did it. I know. It's a yeah. t-shirt, isn't it? Yep. It's actually on an action figure. Oh, God. That's right. Royal Rumble exclusive. At least he can own it. You know? Dude, I remember when that happened and everyone was like laughing. And then like, I think like Nova put something on Facebook. Or he's like, dude, like he could have freaking died. Like, because with all the stuff under the ring, oh, yeah. he, just, he was just so lucky that he didn't like snap his neck, hitting something, not knock. I'm going to knock on wood right now. Oh, God. That he didn't, no, table. I have a table right here. Table. Okay. Get the tables, Devon. Ugh. But, uh, yeah, so I remember that. That's Titus World Slide. Warrior Rumble. Maybe I'll watch that Royal Rumble tonight, actually. Maybe. Ooh, maybe he teams up with Pitbull and he becomes Mr. World Slide. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you meant like Craig Pittman at first. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Titus O'Neil and Craig the Pitbull Pittman? All right. 
That'd be an interesting team. I could get behind that right now. I wonder what the Pitbull's up to. Should have him on. Actually, we should have Pitbull team up with Anthony Durante. They could be the new Pitbulls. No, Anthony Durante's a dead one. Gary Wolf, that's right. Yeah, Gary Wolf is the one that's alive. I don't mean the dead one. You know, he passed I away. We know what you meant. Listen, we've all made some really bad faux pas in this, in this show today. Well, I'm sure we talk to Slice Boogie in a few minutes. We'll have a few of them as well. Oh, that's right. We're burning the midnight oil. Can't wait to go put in my Simon and Garfunkel cassette after this. Um, before we get to, uh, before our guest joins us, uh, NWA Power was another uh, Power Surge episode. We had a three-way with Jordan Clearwater. And I think, I think there were a couple of new fellas. I'm trying to... I don't even know if I took uh, notes on this one, to be honest with you. I didn't take notes on this one. Oh, well. All right. So, Tony, what is a power surge in terms of NWA power? It's more interview based, it's more discussion based. So, it's like um, the action zone or like uh, live wire. Kind of. It was this one was more of a tribute to, um, to uh, Joseph Hudson, AKA Josephus, AKA uh, Orndorf? Question mark. Ah, uh, okay. And the main event of the show, it was a tag match where they had surprise partners. It was Josephus and his spiritual advisor against David Arquette and his partner, Tim Storm. Um, Wait, what? Yeah, it, it's an old match from like two, two, uh. two or three years ago. Well, obviously, I mean, Josephus, you know, passed away over what? Uh, yeah, okay, I missed that part. Oh. So, um... Yeah, it wasn't a great match. It was still kind of cool because it was part of history, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It just was. It wasn't a good match. Um, not for anything that Tim Storm didn't do, because Tim Storm was trying to direct traffic the best he could. Um, yeah, so Jordan Jordan Clearwater was on there. Uh, he's with Black G's, and he doesn't know if he wants to really cheat. But Black G's is like, doesn't matter, man. You got the win. Wins are money. All that good stuff. Um, there was another match. There might have been some interviews. I don't remember, dude. It was Power Surge. I really wasn't worried about it. Oh, they sort of were advancing stuff with our guest tonight. Um, they were talking. There was a little interview between Jack Stain and Crimson. You know, they're kind of like. I'm looking at that right now, Tony. So maybe they're kind of on the outs, right? You know, we don't know what's going to happen because Jack Stain's taking a shine to our guest, who's actually joining us right now, Kevin. What's up with Crimson's hair? It's kind of short. No, it's long. He's got to get a ponytail. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us right now. If you haven't seen him yet, he's everywhere. Turn on a TV, go on YouTube. You can't miss him because he's on fire. Slice Boogie joins us. Slice, can you hear us? I hear you loud and clear. You hear me? Yeah, we got you, man. How's everything, man? Good, man. I'm chilling, you know? Chilling. Things are getting busy again. The wrestling world is alive and well, you know? No, oh, of course, but you've been blowing up. Like, I can't turn around and look at a promotion where Slice Boogie's name is not coming up in the conversation. And I didn't want to talk about it last week because I didn't want to spoil anything that's happening with the MLW tapings. But man, we got to talk about it. The big return. Yeah, man, it was. Uh, I was able to keep on the wraps. I didn't. I, I didn't tell many people, you know? I didn't tell very many people. So when we came out there, ooh, man, the crowd was crazy. So uh, what do you want to talk about, man? Get the ball rolling. How, how, how many how many people were at that MLW show, do you think? Or the taping? I think they said 22, 2,500 maybe. It was like a packed ECW arena. That's a and I guess they renovated it because like the, when you come in, it's like a bar and like it looks real nice. You know what I mean? So I, you, they might have renovated it during COVID. Had you had you been there when it was uh, used by ECW, or that's kind of never. I used to watch ECW two in the morning on the MSG channel. You know, Friday, Saturday morning, whatever it was. But I never got a chance to go there. Yeah, but, man, um, we're, it we're was first, yeah. That's a, I checked that box off the checklist. You know, that's a big deal for me. Yeah, we're we're, uh, we're we're in New Jersey, so. We we got MSG oh. and that's that's how we watched it, man. It was it was something yeah. else. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was either else. like it was either like two o'clock. It was like maybe, maybe midnight one night. Like one Saturday was it was all depending on what, like when they wanted to put it on. It was like midnight one. Yeah, because they would play like the Rangers highlights before like yep. shit like that. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I remember one two in the morning. I was just I would take a nap before that so I could stay up and watch it. Even though it was only like an hour, right? If I'm not mistaken, it was an hour. Yeah. 
that sh- yeah, that show was only an hour, so I, f- I would have like always want more. They would always tease everything too. All right, so I need to ask you something real quick. So I'm looking at you. What's up with that hat? That's like Yankee colors, but is that a Yankee hat or a Mets hat? This Mets is a Mets hat, bro. Like, you think Yankees own this color blue? You must be out of your mind. I, it you might Mets it, all day. It might be. It, it might just be the, the camera, the, the angle I'm looking at. That looks like a Yankee, a dark navy it blue. Is, it, well, yeah, but white. it's a Mets hat because I don't. I'm not a Yankee fan, you know. Oh, listen, I. You know, we, <laughs> I'm, listen, I'm meeting you for the first time right now. I have no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, they, they have they have Yankee hats with Mets colors, you know? Like, it's just, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I was just if curious. If I want to wear Tim's and I want to wear this color blue, you know, uh, I want the Mets. I ain't mad at you. It was just literally just a question. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's called a Yankee hater hat. That's what they call it, like, in New York. Oh. Yankee hater hat. All right, so there's, some, yeah. there's something behind it. You're not innocent in this. No, he's bringing heat. No, I didn't. I didn't make this. I didn't customize this myself. This is like a thing. This is like a New York thing. Who's your favorite Met? Right now? Yeah. Or both all time and probably Pete Alonso right now. Um, all time. I don't know, man. It's tough. John Franco is up there. Mike Piazza had a good run, but he wasn't like a long time Met, you know. But I say John Franco got to be it. How'd you feel about all the hate? That One of my Pete favorite Alonso plays got? of all time is Bernie Williams, though. Oh, the what? Oh, the heat. How'd you feel about all the hate that Pete Alonso got at the at the uh, after the home run derby after he won his second in a row? I let him hate, you know. Let them all hate. <laughs> is that is that how you live your life too? If people hate on you, you just like let them hate. Yeah, keep my name in your mouth, man. Because <laughs> if you hate. Hate and you bad. You hate me. That's good for me. Boo me. I don't care. You know. That's I keep. Actually, I keep. I keep my nose clean in the business. You know. You might say you don't like me, but you're not gonna say. You know. I was doing this and that. Like I'm not getting canceled. You know. If you hate me because I because I I look good. If you hate me because I talk better than your favorite wrestler. If you hate me for any of those reasons, I rep New York. Perfect. I love it. You know what I mean? Look, I got my. I'm wearing my own shirt. Like, do you think I care? <laughs> I'm gonna go to Rouse and I'm going I'm gonna go to the grocery store and buy tissue paper with this shirt on. Come on, man. I do what Tony, I want. Tony, I can say it right now. Top five. Top five guests already. Top five guests of all time. Do what I want, world. man. You haven't even scratched the surface yet. Like, it has got <laughs> have, you know, already, wow, that's I haven't even had I don't even have any henny. Like, come on, man. Wow. Lucky I don't have henny. I'll be out of control right now. How do you feel about the white claws? You fan or no? Oh, no. Trash. Trash? <laughs> Trash. Those are for 16-year-old girls. Well, why are they drinking? Why are 16-year-old girls drinking? They going to do what they do, you know? That's Whereas true. a 16-year-old boy is going to probably get like a 40-ounce. Maybe not now, but... Mad Dog you know, 2020? I feel like the young boys like beer. Like my nephew is, what, 21? He likes beer all day. I can't even get him to drink liquor. I was and drinking... The uh, like the claws. I was drinking I was drinking PBR before you showed up, and I got a Jameson over there, too, that I was, I was sipping on. For a little bit, JMO is fire. PBR, like, you need to drink like twenty eight of those to get drunk. No, you don't. Not PBRs. Maybe Bud Lights or Coors Lights. I don't know. I'm not a beer guy. Like I'll drink a beer with certain foods, but like yeah, when it's time to get when it's time to turn up, I'm not getting drunk off beer. I did that in college once. I couldn't even move the next day. That hangover <laughs> is different. Yo, this is like we don't have to talk about wrestling at all. <laughs> talk about whatever, bro. I, I'm I have no filter. I talk about whatever, bro. Tony, do we have? But yeah, can we, man. Can we plug his social media and and where to follow him and where to find him? It's easy, man. The Twitter's at Slice Boogie. The Instagram is Slice Boogie. There you go. What more do you need to know? There's no That's dashes. It. There's no hyphens. There's no, no dash. No yeah, six, no nine, numbers. No, no numbers. None of that shit. That might be you know, my PIN number for my EBT card. I don't need y'all knowing that. You know what I'm saying? And I still get EBT. They might cancel it next month, but I'm going to finesse it, though. Don't worry about it. Wait, what is EBT? Like a food stamp. You get like $200 a month <laughs> if you the free food. It's a card, though. Like, you just swipe that shit. Boop. We're just talking about how oh, he yeah. overpaid for Taco Bell from Grubhub. And now we're talking about EBT. <laughs> oh, nah. Taco Bell, <laughs> I eat Taco Bell like twice a year. 
I had it three nah, times. Nah, like EBT is fire. Like, I'm, so you ever go in a grocery store and you'll see like a, a item that you want to try, but it's overpriced, like fucking organic frozen mac and cheese, like six ninety nine. You're not gonna buy that with your own money, but with EBT, <laughs> give me that shit. Let's see what that's about. Let's see what this twelve dollar fro- frozen lasagna from the country of fucking I don't know Kuwait. It's like, like I'm gonna try whatever I want. With that EBT car, and then you can right. load up on you know the necessities. But yeah, well, you want to talk wrestling? Let's talk wrestling, man. Tony, this I can't, I can't. I'm done. I'm already out. I'm tapping out. I'm tapping out. Tony, this is all you, brother. I'm trying to imagine what lasagna from Kuwait tastes like. I'm, I'm trying to imagine why he needs to buy twelve dollar mac and cheese. Cause it's there. It's organic, you know. That's it. Why not? I wouldn't spend my own cash on it. I'll tell you that much. When my money comes out, I'm buying like eggs and oatmeal, brother. No, that's it. What about the ramen? Mm, that's uh, another story. <laughs> I didn't start eating ramen until I, I got in trouble with the law and I was placed in the place. You know? Oh. Is that yeah, when in college I wasn't drinking ramen? I wasn't eating ramen. I mean, where'd you go to college? Upstate New York, Plattsburgh. Like near, it's near Montreal. Uh, very cold. Ah, uh, so like almost like kind of like Buffalo-ish a little bit or no? No, it's near Montreal. Well, Buffalo we is like New York. Yeah, so Buffalo is I'm saying New York, but Buffalo is like you go up and then you go towards the west. Yeah. Whereas my school is straight up, like from New York you go straight up. Montreal is straight up. Like if this is New York City on the map, you just go. So it's pretty well. of, it was like six hours upstate. I never got to go. Are you serious? Fortunately. I heard the women were beautiful. You could drink when you were 18, and I just never went. So. Yo, Montreal, I was 18 years old. We went there on a school trip, and it was like a weekend, and that was the first time I ever like got like blitzed because I could. I couldn't get in trouble for it. It was awesome. Yeah, man. I regret not going there. I don't know why I never went there. I'm sure the women were wonderful compared to the women in that college town. <laughs> No oh, what? They don't. They don't have dimes in Plattsburgh. Not too many, you know. <laughs> and if they do, they're like, I don't know. They're washed up, if you could say. They've been. They've been. They've been through the ringer. A few I don't want to be a girl's four hundredth boyfriend. A few like, miles on those treads. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you know. It's like they're not even an old model. Like imagine a 2021 Camry, but it has like 400,000 miles. Like, where are you going? You drove to, where do you drive? South Africa? All right. We, we knew this show was going to be off the rails. We did not realize that this was going to be off the rails. Tony. do this all day, bro. Tony, bring us back to some normalcy so our wrestling fan I listeners can. About, I can't even. Wrestling. Yeah. All, dude, all I got to say is, all right. So I'm a big NWA fan and I fell into the slice boogie bandwagon when the whole pandemic started and NWA started working with United Wrestling with uh, Dave Marquez and all the stuff was going on with Championship Wrestling from, from Hollywood. That's how I got to know who Slice Boogie was. And then when the new NWA season started and I started seeing you on there, I was like, this is awesome. This makes so much sense. Question I got to ask you. So I know you've been dealing like and working with uh, Danny Limelight and Papa Esco. How does that morph? How does it come about where now you guys are working with Conan and you're revitalizing LAX and MLW? Like, how does the ball get rolling on a situation like that? Uh, they just, some MLW just reached out, you know? They reached out, they gave us the idea, and then um, Conan actually called me, you know? So I was having cold feet about it. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it. Also, I had, this is the first, you're getting the first scoop. I'm still contractually allowed to work with NWA. So that was a major part of signing my deal with MLW. It was like, I, I, I don't know if M- NWA wants to keep me for a long haul or if they feel some type of way, but I want to keep that relationship going. You know, I appreciate what they did for me. They treat me well. I learn a lot. And it's also a different learning experience than MLW, different styles of wrestling. It's making me more of a complete performer complete wrestler. So Conan reached out. At first, I wasn't too sure about it because I wanted to keep working with NWA. And then they told me that I could still work with NWA if I signed with MLW. And that was it. They they, they pitched the idea, LAX, we want to bring it back. You and Limelight, 
And I'm like, you know, I'm very familiar with limelight. We're both New Yorkers, both Puerto Rican. I don't, we're not the same. I'm, I'm definitely more gangster than he is. But you know, he's a good guy. He could wrestle. He's not, he's not, he could fight. He was in the military. So, but he's also Puerto Rican. He also has kind of the same attitude as me, maybe a little different, but that's good. You know, and our styles mesh well. Like as far as a tag team, I've never been a big tag team wrestler, but LAX is a different ball game. It's been successful. Every iteration has been successful. So for me to not jump at the chance for that, I had to say yes, you know? Absolutely. And, uh, and it's not the first time that MLW has, has kind of done this sort of thing where they let, you know, they have a contract with some guy, but if, if opportunities like benefit the performer, they'll let him work somewhere else. Like Brian Pillman worked AEW while still under contract with, with, uh, uh, with AEW with uh, under contract with MLW. So what does that, what does that mean to you when, when uh, an actual company actually has enough faith in you or they know you do the right thing by them, but still allows you to explore your, your, your other opportunities. I mean, I appreciate it, you know, cause at the end of the day, we're all trying to make a living out of this. I'm not making a lot of money, you know, I'm not buying houses and stuff like that, you know? So for them to allow me to build a brand on another platform is only going to help me, you know, help my value go up. And then I'm also still allowed to obviously do independent bookings, also allowed to do overseas bookings when the opportunity will arise. So, you know, it, this is pushing me into a step where I could end up making a good living. You know what I mean? And yeah. I haven't been wrestling a long time either. Like I, I've, as far as NWA locker room, I might have the least experience, you know what I'm saying? And, and I feel like I've, I've done exactly what I need to do there. Um, as far as just performing, you know, putting on a show, MLW went well, you know, uh, sometimes I feel like as, as a young wrestler, well, young in the game, I need more criticisms and things like that. But everywhere I've gone, I know how to carry myself and they treat me like a vet, you know, they don't treat me like a, a green boy, which is like somebody who doesn't have experience. And I've been every opportunity I get, I make, I make, I make it worthwhile, whether it's talking, whether it's wrestling, whether it's, you know, entertaining people, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a natural. And now, now you're carrying the banner of a name that to, to real wrestling fans know the history of LAX. Like, we all know it. Like, we know that Conan started, like, Conan, Hernandez, Homicide, uh, EYFBO, uh, Santana and Ortiz, and now, and now it's you guys. Does that, does that hold anything significant to you, knowing that now you and Danny, who's, who's been on our show, great guy, has he, does this, does this hold any significance to you that now you are, are the, the, the LAX of the future going forward? Yeah, it's a very big deal. I feel like it's a very big deal. And I feel like wrestling fans have wanted, you know what I mean? Maybe they didn't know they wanted a new version, but when me and Limelight came out and we got the crowd hype, they're like, oh, this, maybe this is what we want. Let's see what they have to offer. Cause they, they're obviously, similarities with New Yorkers, Puerto Rican, most LAX members have been like that, but oh, with, with different wrestling styles, you know, different attitudes. Um, I feel like it's a very big deal, you know, and it's only, it's, it's up to us to make it, uh, to live up to those previous guys, you know, because every, all those guys have been successful in their career, you know. Was, was this the first time, the, the inception of this, and I know we're talking a lot about this, but I just want to ask this one last one on this subject. Um, was this the first time you had any interaction with Conan or did you know Conan prior to that phone call? I never spoke to Conan prior. Never. So what was never. that like when you got a guy like Conan, legend Mexico, legend in America, legend everywhere? Uh, yeah, what, yeah, what, what, what was that like to you when you career. got a, when you picked up the phone and Conan was on the other end? Um, so we had two conversations. The first conversation was like, he was just explaining his ideas and I was with it, but I was still on the fence about it. Like, hmm, I don't know if I want to do this. And, um, but the second call was way more convincing. And, and then like, I had reached out to some personal friends of mine, like, like Brody King is a big friend of mine. Um, from, he's from the same wrestling school. He told me to go for it, you know, cause I was having cold feet. He said, yo, just go for it. it it's, he's like, Conan has a track record of helping people. Like even like you, you hear like I've read an article where he helped like Rey Mysterio, like one of the, like a legend. You know, like he's helped a lot of people. He's not he's not bringing us in, and he also convinced me. He's like, we're we're bringing you in, 
with something that's established. You're not coming into a company where you have to scratch and claw and fight um, just to get a name. You know what I mean? Whereas obviously we have to scratch and fight and claw all of us to perform and be the best wrestlers we could be, put on the best show. But it's not like I'm coming in with no one behind me. Like we already have the company behind us. They believe we could do that. So talking to him was like a very big deal. And I'm just looking forward to like learning from him. You know, everywhere I go, I, I always learn from people. Like, like in Ho Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, um, Aaron Stevens brought me in, Sanda. And he's like one, one of the first guys I, I asked for advice as well. You know, I have like a mentor in each company. So yeah, it was Sandow's, a big deal, you know? Yeah, Sandow's not a, a bad guy to uh, sit under his learning tree. Completely smart to the business. Really cool guy. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, that you, you haven't been doing this too long. And uh, in doing some research, and I, and I was not aware of this, during the pandemic, you actually had a hell of a match against somebody who's been in the news a lot lately, Nick Gage. What was that like? Oh, yeah, that was pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually beat him. I didn't just have a match with that crazy motherfucker. I beat him. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, we had a match at Fist Combat. Uh, wasn't part, it wasn't a death match, but it was like a hardcore match per se, you know? Yeah. It was doors and chairs and stuff, no tacks and fire and whatever they use. But it, it was a. Uh, I feel like if we had another match, the next match would be better only because we weren't uh, active, you know? I think that was his first match or second match, he said, in months, you know? And that and I wasn't very, that might have been my second or third match in months as well. But um, it was very intense. The crowd was going crazy. Um, oh yeah, it, it was a it was it was a tough match, you know, uh, hard hitting. He's he's a I mean he's an intimidating guy. I'm not really intimidated. I, I'm from the streets myself, you know. I, I've been through all types of crazy real life situations, but getting to wrestle him, he's a very humble guy, you know, but very crazy, very gangster as well. So I, it was a very it was a good match. It was a big win for me. One of the biggest wins of my career. So, so when you go to these different promotions, NWA, uh, MLW, Championship Wrestling, all these different places, is it treated more than maybe like doing indie spots? Like, is this like, like the territories are kind of back? Like, do, do you, like, I don't know like how familiar you are with, with territories back in like the seventies and eighties and all that stuff. I'm sure you're a student of the game. But does it does it feel like when you go from one yeah. to the other that each one is just as big as as the one that you just came from? As far as indies or as far as promotions? But like from like championship wrestling, like it, it's oh. it's almost it's so, almost so like a yeah. resurgence of the territories to, to me. It feels like. Well, championship from Hollywood is part of United Wrestling Network right. uh, that's run by Dave Marquez, but he's he's like a madman. He's trying to open up a, a territory in like. Atlanta, Florida, uh, Memphis. He's not effing around. Like he's <laughs> he's trying to bring his own ter territories back. But uh, a main reason I signed for MLW is because they have a lot of East Coast influence. You know, I think they're based out of New York now. They might have been used to be Philly, but they're doing Philly. You know, they're doing Chicago. Uh, eventually, they're gonna do New York. I know they do Miami, and then NWA does a lot of South. You know, St. Louis, Atlanta. And then I'm, I live in LA, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood is here, but then there's also, and if anything happens here, like PWG or any other big promotion wants me, I live here. So my main focus was to get, be able to work from across the whole country, basically. Yeah. That's my view. That was my view when I signed with them. It's like, I, now I have, a, I have a base in each territory, the East, the West, and the South, you know? Yeah. So that's how, I, that's how I viewed it, exactly. So it's basically... You kind of you kind of got to think it's kind of like territories in a way, you know. Yeah, and, and and it just seems like now in 2021, even post pandemic or even pre pandemic, like these companies that may not have seemed as prominent maybe 10 years ago or, or 12 years ago, now like every like people watch wrestling in many different ways now on YouTube on you know streaming, and so it gives yeah, yeah. it elevates them and it, I feel like it benefits the talent even more because now they have a name. Yeah, even uh, YouTube is crazy. Even like a, a, a in small indie promotion, like I had a show in Texas a month or two ago, Hurricane Pro, and my, a friend of mine, uh, Lucas Riley, wrestled another friend of mine, Miranda Alize, like uh, intergen intergender match. 
and they got like ninety thousand views already from a match, you know. Yeah, and that's just right. Re- regular YouTube, like it's not a big, it's not a, a, it's not a small indie, but like that show wasn't huge, you know. First show back, and and then you'd look at MLW and NWA pre uh, Fight TV deal. They were doing good numbers on YouTube. NWA Power and MLW Fusion or whatever, like their YouTube views are up there, a couple hundred thousand, you know. Yeah. So people aren't gonna be pigeonholed and only watch what. They, it's, they're forced to watch, you know? They're going to find what they want to watch. Like, I'm a big fan of... The, my favorite promotion is Stardom, like Japanese women. I watch them almost every day, and I can see it on YouTube, you know? I can see it on YouTube. And, and everything... Back in the day when I was young, we couldn't watch what we wanted to watch. We had to find tapes on eBay, and then you'll get a tape, and it's not even what you ordered. Like, <laughs> So the kids are lucky today, man. Wrestling fans in general are very lucky. They sure are. Um, you mentioned stardom. What's your thought about a company like AEW bringing over the, uh, like, you know, specifically women from a promotion like stardom where, of course, there's action, but there's also a lot of pageantry when it comes to women's wrestling in Japan. To me, when I watched them, when they when they did the tournament with AEW, it kind of didn't translate. Any any particular reason why you think that is? Like, like as a fan of stardom, like, you can watch that show and be entertained by it, but for some reason when it comes here doesn't really and it's not even a language thing it just doesn't play well for some reason i think that's up to AEW. you know it's up to AEW to but it's also the traditions as well like yeah japanese wrestling traditions like and like in japan when great muda will spit his mist in the air before the match the crowd the crowd will go crazy whereas like i would you would watch old wcw he'll do the same thing mist in the air and the crowd doesn't really go crazy. You know, they don't ooh and ah. So it's just, I guess, different m- mindsets of what they like in wrestling, you know? Um, I don't know why. I feel like it, but I also feel like it does translate because whenever, like, Ring of Honor would bring over, it depends where you are. Ring of Honor would bring over Japanese women and do, like, an MSG show or something like that. The crowd eats it up. The crowd's eating it up. Maybe AEW is just a different different crowd, you know, who, who's not used to it. Yeah, I know. So, I, uh, but it's up to it's up to the companies to to like build them. Look how NXT has built up Io Shirai, even though she's like one of the best in the world. But when she came over, it translated perfectly. Yeah. Even Asuka, like they 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 got they got over very quick, and they show what they can do. All right, so let's ask. Let, let me ask you a cliche question. Um, who like this is like a. A podcast 101 amateur question but i'm gonna ask it because i'm actually really curious about it you're trying to get us heat with the guest no no not even remotely close it's a, it's a very generic question that he probably has answered a million times who is your dream opponent right now where you work in any of these companies and who would it be all time my dream opponent in a company i'm signed with already Yes, correct. That's the first part. Oh, and the and, second uh, part is all time. I mean, I always want, I want to go for gold, you know? Right. Great point. Who's the champions of these two companies? It's either Nick Aldis or Fatu, you know? Jacob Yo. Fatu. Like, I want, I want a championship match opportunity, you know? So, I mean, I guess I'll pick both of those guys just because of the weight of the match. Um, when it comes down to it, it's all about the match. It's like, do I want to? Do I want to have a, re- a really cr- like uh, a entertaining opening match where there's no stakes, nothing's at on the line, or do I want to go at it with the champ? You know, this guy. One guy's had the belt for a thousand days. Nick Aldis, another guy. I don't know how long Fatu's had the belt, but he's holding it down. You know, so those are those are probably my. I can't pick one. You know, those are the two guys I have to choose. As far as all time. <clears throat> I'll probably pick my favorite wrestler of all time, Undertaker. You know, he always worked well with smaller guys. Not that I'm a tiny guy, but what am I, six feet, 240? This guy is a monster. He, his, his, um, he's always been able to have great matches with, like, smaller athletic guys. Um, and if, if I had to choose someone who's still active right now, probably Kenny Omega or AJ. Those are my top three. It's hard to choose, man. It's like trying to ask me what my favorite food is. You know, I can't pick one. Oh, we, we, know, we, we know it's organic mac and cheese. No, no it was lasagna from Kuwait. Come on. 
Oh, that's right. Nah, I didn't say I liked it. I just said I bought it. <laughs> you guys are from both from Jersey, so you know the pizza vibes, man. You know what's up. The best pizza place is literally in my town. Well, it's right outside the town. Star Tavern. Ooh, baby. Nice and thin Star crust Tavern, pizza. That's a bar? It's a bar and did pizza did you place. Did you say your best pizza is from a bar? No, no. it's not a bar. Get out it's, of here. It's the, no, star, no, it's the Star Tavern. Google it. You'll thank me. You just said thin crust? Like what? Like a cracker? Like real thin? I don't know, man. It's pizza. That's it's not a cracker. Where are you from? Wait, you're from Jersey too? Yeah, me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm from West Orange, New Jersey. <laughs> Confusing me, man. Oh, I don't know what's man. going on? What, you thought I was from New York or something? Nah, I don't know where you're from. When you say Star Tavern, I'm thinking you might be from like Delaware or some shit. <laughs> yeah, he's from Delaware. Actually, where'd you go to school? You went to school in uh... Plattsburgh. I'm getting heat from a guy who went to college in Plattsburgh. Oh, stop. What's the matter with you? <laughs> You're trying to say he's from New York. You're trying to sell him on thin crust pizza. You know you're not going to win that argument. That's a great point. Come on. So, so slice. What do you like to eat? It's a very journalistic. Uh, I can question. name a million foods. I'm a big. I'm a big foodie, man. I love food. Serious. What don't I like to eat? It's very small. Like I don't eat liver. That's like one of the few things I don't eat. Liver. I'll try almost anything else. What's the, what's the craziest? I don't thing? eat liver. I don't eat gizzards. And, uh, craziest thing I ever ate? Your gizzards suck. Yeah, I don't like the texture. Uh, craziest thing I ever ate, it, it wasn't bad, but like a cricket taco. It's like a Mexican place out here that made tacos with crickets, and it was actually not bad. And okay. I don't like wait, bugs. Wait, wait, which Mexican? Wait, you're talking to New York? There's a, Me there's a Mexican place that serves No, 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 L.A., in L.A. Oh, L.A. Well, that kind of doesn't surprise me. It yeah, doesn't probably be the craziest thing I ever it does. It doesn't really surprise me here either because i've seen that on the menu at, at in west orange at the star tavern no at folklore Order, yeah get folklore. Your, go, get your thin, go get your thin crust cricket pizza i'm sure it'll be fucking wonderful <laughs> he fucking left the guy got a fucking canada canadian flag <laughs> now i'm confused man the guy's from everywhere slice let me ask you so you mentioned That's like, you know what yeah. I don't blame you for being confused about the Canadian flag. I am a big uh, Bret Hart fan, so that's why I have the Canadian. I brought that flag with me to SummerSlam 1997 at the East Rutherford Arena, uh, Continental Airlines. It was the Brendan Byrne at the time. That's the flag that I bought uh, in 1997. I still have it, and that's why I, I want to keep it. So I was a big Hart Foundation guy, big Bret Hart, Owen Hart guy. Bret won the title for the fifth time that night. Against... Against Boogie's boy, the against taker. Undertaker. So Bret right. Hart's one of the goats. Is you get a pass, I guess. <laughs> is Undertaker the reason why you got into wrestling, or is he just your favorite? Nah, my brother put me on the wrestling. My brother's like eight years older than me, so late eighties, early nineties, the wrestling was on, whether I wanted it to be on or not. So it was always on the channel, and but he was a big Undertaker fan. And you know, you, you always want to be like your big brother, so. That's true. You know what I mean, but it, but was the Undertaker the reason why you decided to train to become a wrestler? Nah, no, no, no. Hold on. I, I just started training, like on a hunch. Oh yeah, R.I.P. Yeah. Paul Bear. That's yeah, me. That, Is that you? That's me. Deliciously handsome. Oh, that's man. you. Oh yeah. Oh, that's that's gangster. I don't know why I, he's touching you on the chest like that. Like, what is he like? Yeah, that's that's what everyone says. That's the first thing everyone ever says about that picture. Is why is Paul Bearer like groping my breast? <laughs> <laughs> that's nuts. Yeah, <laughs> but he, I can't say. To be honest, Kenny Omega is probably the reason I tra I trained. Like, I, I I didn't. I never thought of being a wrestler. You know, it was just like a one day tryout. Uh, Kenny had wrestled Okada first time, and like it made me fall in love with wrestling again. Because as a fan, I fell out of love with wrestling many times. Um, so that match, and then you know, I was in a gym already. I was already in shape, and there was like a one day tryout. I was like, let me just see what this is about, you know, just for fun, for shits and giggles. And I was the best one at that. I was the best one at the class by far. Like wasn't even close. And then you know, I, I kind of finished wrestling school pretty quick, you know. So like. It wasn't like some people take years to finish. 
some people, you know, take seven, eight months. And that was, that was the latter, you know, I, I finished quick. I got, the, I feel like they call me, they said I'm a natural and I feel like I am a natural. So probably Kenny Omega just reinvigorated my love for the sport. And I, I can't say Undertaker made me want to train, you know, Undertaker just made, I just, just my favorite wrestler. So was it, was there like a trigger pin moment where like, you're like, all right, I'm doing this now. Was it just being a fan of Kenny Omega? Was it that session at the, at the, at the school? Was it? The tryout is there like a trigger pin moment where you're like, all right, this is my life now. I mean, once I went to the train, the school, that was it. You know, once like, but they didn't tell me like, oh man, you're really good. Da, da, da. You know, they don't baby people at Santino Bros. I mean, obviously, I I could just I could tell. You know, like there's guys who can't even do a role. I'm like, and I'm doing everything easy. And there's guys that can't speak. And I'm, you know, cutting a decent promo first time ever. But, like, my friend had told me, he's like, yo, you keep talking about... Because I would joke around in the gym, like, I'm going to have to sign a WWE, like, you know, like just cutting promos while we're lifting weights. And my friend is like, do it then. Like, stop talking about it and do it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to sign up. And then from there, that was it. You know, That was probably the trigger when my friend told me to sign up. A, a quiet guy, soft-spoken guy who, who was like, do it then. Don't talk about it, be about it. And I'm like... This, for this guy to, like, say that, maybe he, he saw it in me, you know? Well, I can tell you this much. I get to see it uh, when you're playing your trade every week on NWA Power. Uh, I've been subscribing since they came back, since they went on a uh, fight. Uh, you're absolutely right. Your promos have been fire. Your matches have been great. The shit you were talking, like, to Jack Stain, like, I'm teaming up with Mims for the first time, a guy I just met, and we beat you guys. That that's some fucking that's yeah, some I mean crazy like right there. He's a the, the, and and for people who don't know, NWA is not giving you uh like a script. And this is a one shot deal. This is it's a, as real as it gets. You know, you go up there, NWA is not giving you a script, you know? You they're like, yo, well, we're gonna put you up there. You guys have to talk about your match, or you guys have to talk about what's going on. That's it, you know. Not micromanaged at all. So if you let me say what I want to say, I'm going to go up there and say what I got to say, you know? That's it. Oh, no curses? Fine with me. I don't got to curse. Cool. So what, what's it like What's it like working with two veterans like Crimson and Jack Stain? What's that like for you? It's been a very good experience for me because obviously I beat them. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> <laughs> even though Crimson got his back, you know, it's all right. Yeah, but, but um, they they, they treat me like a they treat me like a vet, you know. They don't treat me like a rookie, so it's been a very good experience there. Like I the, the I I haven't been able to pick everyone's mind in NWA, but I feel like uh after our first few matches, they, they got confident. They have confidence in me, like they trust me. Like if we gotta figure something out, they they have trusted me, you know. As opposed to you go you go into a company couple years in and shut up don't say anything this is what we're doing yada 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 it's not like that i've earned their respect so working with them and they've earned my respect as well you know uh just pros you know it's a different ball game yeah i go to an indie show there's a guy who doesn't know how to fucking suplex you might kill you and then you're working with a guy who's been wrestling 15 20 years uh, like a complete pro so it's just a different level you know and it's just it's making me better you know, it's making me way better. So it's been a real good experience working with those guys. And and I'll be honest, and I'm and I'm not just blowing smoke. I mean, you you move around the ring and you handle a microphone, like guys that have been in the in the business like five or ten times as long as you have. And I think that's a testament to, like you say, being able to pick up on it and gravitate to it. And you know, it it just came it just came like uh like second nature to you. My thing is like I love the storytelling in the NWA. I just don't know where this whole Jack's Dane slice boogie relationships going and why it's why him taking a shine to you is becoming between two friends, you know, any kind of, any kind of like, like why all of a sudden he's taking a liking to you, you know, like, are you coming between he respect, two? He respects my gangster. Jack's respects my gangster. That's all. No, I'm never, I'm never going to shy away from a fight. I, maybe he thinks I could be a good ally as opposed to an enemy. 
Like, I'm not going away. You beat me up. I'm not going away. And I'm, I'm going to bring it to you. So maybe, maybe Crimson just has to, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, whatever. So Crimson, maybe we just got to squat up and we could take over the whole NWA. I don't know how Crimson doesn't, he feels some type of way. He got his win back. You know, I don't feel like he should have any animosity. You got your win back, you know, we're good. Tony, I think I think we found the name of the episode. It's called Jax Respects My Gangsta. That's yeah, respects my super respects my gangsta. <laughs> no arguments. I here. eat almonds. This is the most as this is the most ungangster food you can eat. Yeah, but it's Fucking packed almonds. with protein. You're good. Yeah, well, what's wrong with almonds? Almonds are great. Just not gangster. <laughs> so you would take shit if you were walking around eating almonds? Come on, for real? Almonds? I don't know. I just have them. They're like fake healthy. They're not even that healthy. You eat too many of them, it's bad. Calorie sure, dense. Sure. That's what they call it. What do they call it? Calorie dense. They're very high in calories. Oh, yeah. Like you eat a little bit, and you know, that's why I eat popcorn. You can eat this much popcorn, fucking 100 calories. But back to Jackson and the Crimson, you know, it is what it is, baby. You know, I punched them in the face a few times. They got their get back. I'm in the locker room. They going to see me when they see me, you know. They either, they, Jack, I mean, Crimson can either run with us or, you know, if he wants to go on his own, you know, do what he wants to do. So there is, so there is going to be a partnership with you guys. I'm kind of digging this. I dig it. I mean, we have, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been, I haven't been informed, but it looks like it. You know, we'll see. That's incredible. I still got, I still got my boy Marche Rocket, you know, holding it down. That's right. You guys have been so teaming I I, Yeah, teaming up a little bit. He's a good guy. You know, he's a, he's a good, nice guy. Athletic. I, I I might have to bring a mean streak out of him. If I could just make him start drop kicking civilians that I don't that mean mug me in the street, you know, we could get him. Just gotta bring the gangster out of him. You know? That's right. I love it. You guys like if the UPS guy, if the Amazon guy delivers my package a day late, Marche drop kick him. Boom. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, what you have any opinion on the crop of guys that have come into the NWA recently, like uh? Uh, you know, guys like Marche, guys like Mims, uh, you know, somebody who's been around the game a long time, like Black G's, you know, somebody who's who's pretty new like you guys, like Jordan Clearwater. Uh, any thoughts on any any of those guys that you've been coming that you came into the NWA with? I mean, a lot of those guys are vets. Even Clearwater, I don't I think he's been wrestling six years, maybe, you know. I don't think he, you know what I mean? I have, I'm probably one of the youngest guys as far as experience there. So they're bringing in guys who are just, they just have to prove themselves. I mean, Black G's has been around a long time too. Yep. But Mims, I like that Mims, Plunkett, Jeremiah Plunkett's wrestling for what, 15, 17 years? Yeah, yeah. He's a real vet. And he sometimes all these guys need is a shot. They put Plunkett on the podium. Wonderful promo, you know? Wonderful promo. So sometimes it, these people just need a shot. So uh, NWA is, is bringing eyes on a lot of p talented people who just, may, for some reason or other, they just never got their shot on a bigger stage. Because it <laughs> takes time. You know, you, some people take 15 years. They look at a guy like Scorpio Sky. He was wrestling forever before Ada, and he's been talented forever. So it just, some people get lucky, some people don't. But when, when your name is called, you just got to be ready. You know, you can't shit the bed. And, and and I and I still feel like Scorpio Sky is underutilized. Yeah, hundred percent. I like I like the what? thing I like the thing with ego. I don't hate it, but like where he could be and should have been. And again, things things are fluid. Things can change. I drastically think that that Scorpio is completely not used. I think the, he got hurt though. He might have gotten hurt. You might be right. You might be right, but let me ask you this: Have you had have you had any interactions with Billy Corgan? And if so, what were those like? Uh, yeah, but just during taping, you know, um, 
just what he wanted out of certain things. We didn't have like a long winded conversation. If we did talk, if we did talk, it would be more mostly about like what we were doing, like what we were filming and yeah. what he wants from me, you know? But he, we didn't is he, really is, have is, any is, philosophical questions, like discussions about life and wrestling and is, popcorn. Is, is he accessible? Like, like if you wanted to, like you could have a conversation with him. If he's at the show, like if he's at the, yeah, uh, of yeah, course, a, yeah, 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 he's not a, he's like a, he acts like a regular dude, you know, he doesn't act like a hot shot at all. Obviously, it's all, it's his baby, it's his creation. But if you want to talk to him, you can be like, yo, yo, Billy, uh, because that happened one time, like we didn't really know what he wanted, so it's like, where's Billy at? We gotta, we gotta go talk to Billy, see what he wants. And he's like, oh, what's up, guys? And that was it. No, it's. Not hard at all. He is not a Vince McMahon who you have to fight seven writers to talk to. Nice. Uh, yeah. I, I know that's a question we've had a lot of guys from NWA on. I've never actually asked that question. So I was actually really, it's really cool to hear that, that answer that he's just, I mean, he's a fan at heart, just like the rest of us. So. Yeah. Yeah. He's down to earth. He's cool. Yeah. So where's your, where's your pizza spot? You grew up in New York. In LA? No, I, mean, I live in LA though. Yeah, but you're you're a New York guy. Where was your spot in New York? John's. Lo- I mean, obviously you have a local place where you can walk to, and then you have a place that you're willing to travel to. Um, my local place is called Samarius Pizza. It's in Astoria. That's where I'm from. It's just it's not not it's not like the best pizza in the world, but it, it's a unique pizza, sweet sauce. Right before they put your slice in the oven, they put more cheese on top, you know, fresh mozzarella, yeah. just. So that's my favorite spot as far as my local spot. If I we're love talking, like the whole city, probably Grimaldi's, Patsy's, you know. John's on Bleecker is mine. I don't think I, I never had it. I never had it. No. Nah. They had it. They have. They had it out here. Uh, I think they had a pop up shop. They might have opened it up, but I want to try it. The square slice with the pepperoni. That yep. shit looks fuego. I when, I lived in, <laughs> when I lived in Astoria, we used to go over to uh, Steinway. You ever go to Rizzo's? Oh, yeah, yeah. They got a good square slice. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Rizzo's was I over. almost died in Polito's. You know Polito's on Broadway? The pizza yes. Place? So I had, this is when I was younger. I, I, would always, I would always get extra cheese, you know, on some Ninja Turtle shit. So I'm there. I think I had literally just finished, had a baseball game. I might have been, I was less than 10 years old. Went there with my mom, extra cheese, and I like choke on the cheese. And my mom told me I turned blue, like I was about to die. And like some some random construction worker just gives me the Heimlich, like, Hugh! and I spit the cheese out, like almost started crying, like a little bitch. So I almost died because of pizza, man. Wait, Believe how? Old not. Old? And I never got less than ten, like eight, maybe eight or nine. How are you calling yourself out for crying like a bitch when you almost died? Yeah, Come on, man. Cause it was pizza, I mean, you know. Yeah, what a yeah. wonderful death! Imagine, imagine I yeah, died of sure. pizza. I wouldn't be mad. I'm not sure about it, but I think it's okay to be a little bitch if you're less than ten years old. Yeah, come on, man! Yeah. Little spice boogie choking on some cheese. Come on. <laughs> I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't going, I wasn't crying crazy, crazy, but it was like a little. <laughs> oh, dude! You I almost you died, dude. Come on. Yo, bro, it was crazy. Thank God that guy gave me the Heimlich because my mom don't know how to do a fucking Heimlich. If my mom had a fucking uh, slipper, she might have slapped me in the back of the, the neck and I could have, but yeah, bro, I almost died in Politos. I'm very familiar with Steinway, all that area because I grew up in Woodside Projects. So like Woodside, Astoria, that Long Island City area, that's my backyard. So. Gotcha. Yeah, Long Island City. I used to go do comedy at the Creek and Cave all the time. I don't know if you're familiar with the Creek. Maybe not. No. Right in Long Island City. Why you always got to plug your comedy when we're talking? Because I'm a freaking self-loathing or self-promoting jerk. That's why. That's Nothing wrong with that. That's it. Nice yeah. Hit me up if you want the guy's wearing his own merch. shirt. Hit me up. You yeah, that's fucking great. Well, if you, oh, if you want a Slice Boogie t-shirt, hit him up at Slice Boogie on the Twitter, Instagram, Slice Boogie. Make sure you get that. We're on the line with Slice. Um, Listen, this has been fantastic, man. I mean, you're all over the place. They want to see you. MLW Battle Riot 3 is going to air this Saturday. 
10 o'clock on YouTube. NWA Power, 605 Tuesdays on Fight. Check them out. Doing great things, doing wonderful things. If you're not up on Slice Boogie, you got to get up on this, man. Yeah, yeah. We just getting started. Like, are you kidding me? Of course. Just getting started. Like, this was like, the ball just started to roll. I love it. Anything else you want to leave? Do you want to leave your fans with? You want to leave the people with before we let you go, Slice? Just keep tuning in, man. MOW and NWA, um, United Wrestling Network. Keep tuning in. I might be, a, I might do an indie show here or there, but you know, my rate went up, baby. Like, I, you can't be offering me. <laughs> yeah. People be trying to offer me what they offered me two years ago. I'll be like, nah, it don't work like that. I'm, I'm getting popping. <laughs> I need the hotel. I need the flight. I need like good snacks in the back. Don't, don't bring <laughs> fucking baked lays. Or almonds? Huh? Or almonds? I mean, nah, I don't <laughs> eat almonds. I only eat almonds at home. But yeah, I need good snacks, man. Like yeah, protein free energy drinks. Come on, man. Yeah, awesome, yeah. man. <laughs> Fuck baked lays. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Free no That could be, that's the name of the show. Fuck baked lays. Did you even like? Do you even know what's going on at Frito Lays right now in Can- Topeka, Kansas? There's like a strike. Like people who work there have to work twelve hour days, seven days a week, and like they don't, they haven't gotten a raise in ten years. It's crazy. I just saw a video That's yesterday. Not cool. Holy yeah, shit! So fuck them. I like yeah. kettle chips. Matter of fact, these motherfuckers right here. What? I don't think. I, don't I think, love this guy. I don't, they, I don't think they fucking Korean barbecue. This is not the best flavor, but I don't. I don't think they have slave <laughs> labor. So no, fuck lays. They gotta get their act together. Yeah, Pepsi Frito Lay. I think it's. I think it's Pepsi owns it. I think. Yeah, Pepsi is trash too. I got <laughs> Coke Zero in the fridge, guy. Pepsi. My man. <laughs> Wait, does, it, does, it, does PepsiCo still own Taco Bell? Uh oh. Uh oh. You might be in trouble if you like some Taco I, Bell. I don't care about Taco Bell either. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pick this up next week. Fuck Taco Bell. <laughs> fuck Frito Lays. Fuck Pepsi. Oh man, Slice Bookie, this was awesome, bro. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you guys. You know, I'll continue to entertain y'all. After I win a couple straps, you can have me back on. I'll have the belts like on my shoulder and you know. Any top, anytime you want, my friend, because we could talk about everything but wrestling, and I would be so super, super happy with it. Yeah, man. Listen, don't even put pressure on the belts. You want to come back next week? Come back next week if you want to. Anytime. Bet, 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 bet. All right. Anytime. Slice, right, fellas. This has been a pleasure, man. Thanks for joining us. Good luck with everything and keep kicking ass, my friend. Thank you guys, man. No more fucking thin crust pizza, bro. All right. Oh, Star Tavern's legit, bro. Not at all. All right. Not at all. <laughs> That's it. That's how we close the show. <laughs> Slice, man. Be well. Slice boogie, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, what a great guy. Fucking hey, dude. We two for two tonight. Dude, I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. I was nervous going in, but both home runs. Tony, dare I say, slice boogie, top five. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent. Two top fives in one night. How rare is how? We are in like most marketable. Uh, would say rarefied air, <laughs> as we would say, the most marketable man. How's he doing in, in MLW, by the way? He's got a he still has a belt, right? He is going to be defending the Korean championship against King Muerte. No, not the Korean championship. Caribbean. Caribbean. You said Korean. I said Korean, did I? I think you said Korean. I might have. I don't know, Kev. It's been a long fucking episode. It is. We're actually wow. Three hours is normal, but for, for the two of us, I just pretty pretty long. I just hate three hour shows. This one uh, listen. Don't get me I'm wrong. with you. This was fun, but like when it's like fucking 945 and it's like we're pushing three and a half hours, I'm like, ugh. We I just hit it out of the park with two incredible guests. Oh, no. Not taking anything away uh, from this, but me, all things being equal, three hour shows, fucking kibosh on that shit. Well, I mean, once once uh, we get back on a full-time basis in the old uh, proverbial studio, A, eh, then we'll be able to, you know, two twenty. Two hours, two twenty, something like that. I know. You know what? I'm gonna before we go. I'm just gonna try to twist this. I want you to see what I'm living with. Do you see all the shit in the bar area? 
I see chairs. I see, yeah, see that. That's my kitchen table. It's downstairs I see now. Trees of green, yes. red roses too. It's like I'm living out of a dorm room. I'm cooking eggs on a hot plate in the morning for breakfast. Why don't you just grub up some Taco Bell, bro? Fuck. Yeah, four dollars a taco. Fucking. Pal. You know what? I my mom always taught me like sometimes you have to pay a little bit more for the convenience of just not having to oh, do. Listen. I, I pay for a convenience guy, but I pick and choose my spots, you know? But there's like a great meme that, that is actually out there. It's like, oh, why drive 10 minutes to go there when I can pay $87 in fees for, for DoorDash or Grubhub? It's so. not even that. Like I pay, I pay on uh, Seamless, which is Grubhub's other company. What's Seamless? It's literally the same thing. Seamless was bought by Grubhub and they just kept them separate. When I was working in New York, Seamless was like what everybody was doing. So I just signed up for that. I also have a Grubhub account, but it's literally, it's like signing up for Sirius or XM. It doesn't matter which company you sign up with. Like it's the same shit. You can you still do saying? both. You could still, I think they might still have separate radios. I think. Yeah. Cause it's Sirius XM. Yeah. But if you have an XM radio, you still get Sirius XM. Oh, I didn't realize XM radio still existed. Yeah, they're, they're still around. I don't. I don't think they do them. I don't have either, anymore. but but uh, I'm trying to think because my wife's got one in her car, and I think. Uh, oh, a little pro tip from your uncle Tony: if you have Sirius XM and you cancel it, they won't shut your radio off. So fucking feel free to cancel it. So there you go. So wait. So it's Sirius XM and XM and Sirius are actual radios, or are they just a service? Oh no, no, you they're like. There's separate radios. Like you can get a Sirius radio, you can get XM radio, and you get the same broadcast. So if if I unsubscribe to Sirius XM, will my radio not work? It's not supposed to. They're supposed to zap it and shut it off. So I couldn't listen to the regular radio on the radio, the actual no, no. physical just, structure? Just your Sirius XM. If you have a car where everything's built in, you just won't get Sirius XM. You'll get FM, you'll get AM, you'll get all gotcha. that shit, you know? One's got nothing to do with the other. Gotcha. I know. I'm, my fucking brain hurts. Too. No, I, it's not you. It's something else completely. Um, Is there anything else we need to talk about? Is there anything that we... I don't about? think so. I don't... Did, did we give the John Cena return enough credit? John Cena, right? Back. And uh, yeah. Oh, another big return we didn't talk about real quick. Davey Boy Smith Jr. Yeah, but that wasn't on TV. It wasn't? I don't think it was on the pay-per-view. No, it wasn't. Oh, no, I don't think it was on SmackDown. It wasn't? I mean, I watched SmackDown. I didn't see it, and I went back and tried to watch it. Oh, well. I, 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 I could be dead wrong. But I even you? I watched, like, the, the WWE.com after, like, the, the exclusive videos. I don't know if it was. It may have been a dark match. I could be. I could, again, I could be wrong. Harry but, Smith is back. Harry Balls, whatever his name is. Yeah, Harry Smith. And he actually... Got a better promo in that little backstage WWE.com exclusive than he had in MLW. How many takes? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm listen. Harry Smith is one of the funniest guys I've ever met in my entire Harry's life. Harry Smith's a great guy, but so, sometimes he's like his dad when he cuts promos. Dude, he's like bizarre. Bizarre. <laughs> but I'm gonna win the Royal Rumble because I'm bizarre. Well, okay. but now, dude, I, I just I just can't. I can't get the image of him chasing people down the streets of Raw out of my head. It was just some, like the greatest, the most hysterical thing I've ever, ever seen in my life. But great guy. Awesome dude. Um, very happy that he's back. And hopefully he's 36, I think, 35, 36. So, oh, he's got plenty of life. In so he's, hopefully he's got some good longevity in there if, if it's what he wants. And, you know, who knows if he's going to go back with Natalia. Tyson Kidd is still there. So maybe we see some sort of, you know, Heart Dynasty gimmick come back because Tyson Kidd is in the best shape he's ever been in his entire life. Is he allowed to wrestle though? That's what we have to figure out. I mean, you got to think like if Edge can do it, if some of these guys can do it, there's I don't think Daniel Bryan. There's no reason why maybe maybe Tyson Kidd could have another run in him, but it's possible. Oh, yeah. geez, excuse me. Whew. But that would be incredible. But he 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 wrestled in the British Bulldog shorts and the fringes and. And stuff like that. So, you kind of had a feeling when his father was inducted this past April that they might have been planning something. Well, he was signed since March. Oh, he has been. Yeah. 
Oh, so they're probably smarter than I am. I didn't think they had anything planned that far ahead. Yeah, no, he he was signed since a lot of people. Like Eva Marie was signed like a year, like in November of like 2020, and didn't debut till like two or three weeks ago. So, I mean, COVID has a lot to do with it, but just planning. I don't want to sell them short. Planning probably has something to do with it too. Well, I don't know about planning and I don't know about being bizarre, but we are the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. Thank you once again to our guest, O'Shea Edwards from Ring of Honor at Big Bad Kaiju on the Twitter machine. Thanks to Slice Boogie breaking fucking hearts and breaking necks over at the UWN, MLW, and of course, the NWA. Uh, you can follow him at Slice Boogie on the Twitter machine and Instagram. Kev, you got plugs tonight? Please tell me you do. Oh, T Donk, I don't. Not till not till August, baby. Um, August, I'll be back. Uh, I'm, I don't have anything booked for July, but August, you know, I'll be in, in Alaska, so watch out for that. And I'll be doing some stuff uh, locally, and then hopefully, who knows? Who knows what could pop up, brother? Who knows? Well, speaking of popping things up, I think Matt's going to be popping out of that pizza oven of his joining us next Monday. We will be virtual once again because we are still in a war zone here at Studio A, but hopefully we'll be back the week after that. I don't think we have any guests next week, and maybe we'll keep it that way because maybe, just maybe, we'll play some games. Maybe we'll have a top five next week too. I don't know. I'm putting carts before horses, and I'm taking spoons out of porridge, Kev. I don't know Uh, what I'm saying anymore. It's been a long fucking night, and I'm tired, and I'm crazy. Don't you dare take a spoon out of my porridge. Don't you dare. I'm sorry. Don't you dare. All right. Say, want to say thank you very much. I, at Kevin Garifo on Twitter, at Shining Wizards Kevin on Instagram. Uh, just follow us at Wizards Podcast on Instagram, on all platforms everywhere. Pro Wrestling Tees, buy some shirts. And uh, and thank you very much for supporting us. 10 years in November, baby. We're getting there. We're getting close. 10 years. Good God. It's been a long time. That's right. Well, good night, Kevin. Don't, don't you. Okay. I love you. Love you too, buddy. <laughs>